Minute Maid Park, home of the Houston Astros, where the Colorado Rockies are here for one more before both teams head to Denver to conclude this four-game series. It's afternoon baseball today, and we welcome you in. I'm Julia Morales. Bill Brown, Alan Ashby will join you in the booth in just a few short minutes. We hope everyone is safe out there with Tropical Storm Bill heading in, the effects of that. These fans have braved the storm and are here with us today. A great crowd on hand for Vince Velasquez, who will take the mound for the Astros and hoping for some run support like we've seen from this Astros ball club the past couple of days. They're getting it done at the top of the order. How about George Springer and Carlos Correa having the game that they had yesterday? George Springer, three for four, but of course the two big swings, his ninth and tenth home runs on the season. One to left field, sending one slider out to right field. Impressive job by him, of course, on defense. But Carlos Correa, who has proved that he belongs at this level, showing so much maturity at the plate right now, gets his first career three-hit night last night. A very impressive performance by him as well, of course, with the three hits. But they let off the game with back-to-back -back singles. I didn't even mention that part. The offense getting it done early, start scoring four runs. And you see the numbers there. These two are complementing each other very well. A.J. Hinch saying today that he likes these guys together in the lineup. And you will see them again. George Springer will lead off once again. Carlos Correa will follow him up in the two-hole. Uh, these two very comfortable leading things off for the Houston Astros. And today they will be joined by Jose Altuve, which makes this game that much more exciting. We haven't seen Altuve in a couple of days now, but he is back. And Brownie and Ash will get you set for first pitch in lineups after this as they talk about how he should be the starter in the Midsummer Classic. Don't go anywhere. Here at Minute Maid Park, and the brief uh, series comes to an end here in a few hours. Both clubs will be moving on to Denver and Coors Field for the next two games. Bill Brown and Alan Ashby joining you to talk about all-star voting. About two weeks to go for the fans to vote only online this year, and the vote totals are rather astonishing, especially at second base for Astros fans who now are furiously headed for their computers, Ash. Well, let's hope so. <laughs> I mean, Jose Altuve, if you're going to match him up with Omar Infante, and it's kind of a love you blue 
theme when you look at the all-star squad in the American League. It's all Kansas City Royals. But Jose Altuve got off to a great start. He has struggled over his last 25 games. In fact, hitting 220 in that span. But his overall season to this point, in some areas, even better than last year. As you can see, uh, looking at some of the numbers from this year to last year, Jose is up in the home run, certainly uh, running the bases very well and driving in a few more runs. Jose Altuve is going to get hot. But there's the squad right now, Brownie, and uh, you'd have to say it's a little heavily loaded on the Royals' side. Well, it's the Kansas City Royals and Mike Trout against the National League. That's the way the all-star game shapes up as of right now. It's coming up Tuesday, July 4th. Is anybody interested in watching that? Jose Altuve and Omar Infante's numbers displayed. Omar is a, is a fine professional. Uh, this year he happens to be in the 0-0 club. Zero homers, zero steals. Jose with a fine season underway. And the only reason we're comparing these two guys is because they are the two top second basemen in the voting this year in the American League. There are others, and Jason Kipnis with the Indians has a good argument maybe for why he should be the starting second baseman. Dustin Pedroia is having a fine year. Uh, Brian Dozier with the Minnesota Twins. But right now with the top two spots in the voting, Jose Altuve deserves your vote. And he is back in the lineup today after missing three days with a right hamstring strain. Coming up, man on fire. A season of spectacular debuts rolls on today as Houston's newest young gun takes on the Rockies. Vince Velasquez makes his home debut when we come back. Four in a row. We'll check the standings for the Astros, who are still atop the AL West, as you know. Two and a half in front of Texas now. The Angels are four and a half in arrears. They're at 32 and 32 at 500. Seattle is seven and a half back, and Oakland trails by ten and a half. Pretty intriguing division right now, and you bring in Santana now to play left field today. That youth in the organization, very talented bunch of guys. Santana putting up. Terrific numbers at AAA this year, and I believe player of the month here most recently in the minor leagues and the PCL. Just keep bringing the uh, young talent along. Don't know how long he's going to be with the club right now, but he joins another very good one out there today, Vince Velasquez, who showed great stuff. His lone start in the bigs against Chicago. Velasquez about to make his second major league start. The first one was a dandy. Five innings, no earned runs. Showed a great fastball in this game, and we expected that. We had heard that he could get up to even 100 miles an hour, but he mixed in some good breaking balls. His changeup might be a very effective pitch to go with what we saw. Pacing probably could use some tidying up. Vince Velasquez, though, the stuff 
a lot like Lance McCullers in terms of velocity. And he made the jump as Lance McCullers did from double A to the big leagues, although Lance uh, on paper was a triple A for a few days. So the Astros are bringing them up quickly this season. Domingo Santana was here last year. He had 17 at bats and was hitless in those 17 at bats, striking out 14 times. So he's anxious to get on the board with his first major league hit today at age 22. And it's a younger and younger Astros club as the season progresses deeper. And as you say that, Bronny, my impression is that they've gotten better, considerably so in some areas with that youthful talent they're bringing along. We've been seeing Carlos Correa, what he can do. He looks just fantastic. George Springer is really apparently, anyway, starting to find it. And when he does, we've said many times he's got a chance to be one of the game's exceptional players. So you're getting this youth coming along. I, I for one, just have loved what I've seen from Lance McCullers. Essentially, McCullers and Velasquez coming up after being at A ball last year at ages 21 and 23. And um, a couple of inches extra on the height for Vince compared to Lance, but uh, both recent draft choices. Although Vince drafted five years ago, he's been derailed by a series of injuries along the way, so they've really limited his innings in the minor leagues. Actually. But what we're seeing right now could slot in very nicely in this rotation. This is just Vince's second major league start, so we shall see how it all stacks up. Uh, quite frankly, when Lance McCullers came up, we didn't know how long he would be in the rotation. He made his point that he belongs there. We'll see if Velasquez can do, do the very same thing. This is his maiden voyage here at Minute Maid Park. That first start came on the road. And now Velasquez gets set to face the Colorado Rockies starting lineup. At double A, he was 3 0 with a 1.370 RA in five starts. Missed 2011 with Tommy John surgery. He has had some injury problems going back to high school days, but he is rolling right now, Ash. Love his stuff. And five innings in that first start against the White Sox yielded just three hits. No runs scored against him. He did walk four, so there were command issues to go with things. But again, just three hits by the White Sox in that series. And so Vince Velasquez gets now a chance, a second shot, to show what he can do. He had a strained right lad in spring training, but now when the Astros need him, he is ready to contribute. Here's the lineup he faces. Charlie Blackman is the center fielder leading it off, followed by D.H. Corey Dickerson, batting third at shortstop Troy Tulowitzki. In right field, Carlos Gonzalez is the cleanup man with Nolan Arenado at third base, Ben Paulson at first, Michael McHenry the catcher, Brandon Barnes the former Astro at left field, D.J. LeMayhew at second base. And lefty Chris Russon will be the pitcher. Sparse crowd here today because Tropical Storm Bill has arrived in Houston. And Charlie Blackman is ready to get it going. Blackman was 0 for 3 in last night's game. He was batting ninth in that one. Now back to his customary leadoff spot and taking strike one. Hunter Wendelstedt is the home plate umpire. 262 for Blackman, eight homers, 21 driven in, and three for 15 on the road trip. He's lost three of four in Miami before coming here. The breaking pitch and a check swing takes the count to one and one. You can see that's a good tight looking breaking ball. Starts the afternoon with a 93 mile an hour heater that will go upward. Yeah, he averaged about 96 in that first major league start two and one now. For Vince Velasquez. Yeah, I'd have to put him shoulder to shoulder with Lance McCullers in terms of velocity. What McCullers does is maintain it. We'll see how Vince does. Fastball is up, and Blackman, who has 14 steals, has worked a 3 1 count. For a strike, three and two. Last night, Dallas Keiko was perfect through five innings. The Astros won it six to three to take the opener of the series. Foul back. So they're three and one on this homestand before heading out on a three city road trip. They'll play two in Colorado. Three in Seattle, three in Anaheim before coming back home. 
to face the New York Yankees in a four game series followed by three with the Kansas City Royals. A.J. Hinch's club 22 and 14 here at Minute Maid Park this season. That's a strikeout. Fastball jumped right up to 96 to record the strikeout. Defensively behind Vince Velazquez. The Astros in the outfield left to right. Domingo Santana, his first start of the year. Jake Marisnik in center. George Springer in right on the left side of the infield. Luis Valbuena and Carlos Correa on the right. Jose Altuve is back in the fold. Chris Carter at first base and behind the plate this afternoon. Hank Conger. D.H. Corey Dickerson is in the box. Dickerson 0 for 1 as a pinch hitter in last night's game. Has a 303 average, five homers, 16 runs batted in for Dickerson. The infield is shifted around, playing him to pull. Valbuena at the edge of the grass. Guarding against a bunt possibility, and that's ball one to Dickerson. Velasquez became the sixth Astro to make his major league debut this season. Center field, Jake Marisnik going back for it, still on the run, looking up and playing that one, and it kicks out toward left center field. It's picked up now by Santana as it got over Marisnik on the way back, and it's a double by Dickerson. But for maybe a foot or two to the left, this ball stays in play. Had this been a, a little more toward the Crawford boxes, and I mean a little, it gets out of here easily. But it's in that unusual and tough corner just at the uh, center field side of the Crawford boxes and well up on the wall. And I think actually there may be a consideration right now for a, a review on this play. Wall Wise comes out. Hunter Wendelstad is the home plate umpire. And he's going to confer with Jerry Lane, the crew chief, who's umpiring at third base today. And also call in the umpire at second, David Rackley. Who may have had a better view as you saw that angle, Ash, and you pointed out how high on the wall it hit. It was back in that corner. Difficult place to view because you see the difference. The yellow line is higher as it goes up on top of that railing. Then it drops down. So it's a tricky call there because the home run line is a few feet higher to the left. Now what I would ask is why did the ball seem to kick upward once it comes out of that corner see how the ball comes up a little higher than where it went into the wall did it hit the top of the yellow line and kick back did it bounce off the top of the yellow line against the fencing behind it it requires something to send it upward like that and uh, yeah, I'm not sure with what we see that I could say anything different than what they've called. My hunch would be this ball hits right on that top corner of the yellow line. And is there an angle to display it better than the one we've been seeing? That's a real question because it is so difficult to tell on that angle we just saw. Yeah. You know, if the umpires got this right, you really have to hand it to them. And again, I'm not so sure that referring back to New York that anybody's going to be able to see it any better than what we did right there. But something has to bring that ball upward and I would contend that the likelihood is it hits right on that top corner of the yellow line. In that case it would still be in play now if it hit on top of the line and up against the fence that's another story. But right above the H in Houston Chronicle that's where the ball seems to. Well, now, you know, based on this view, I'd say it hits well below the yellow line. You see that? Same thing you did. And it appears that the call stands. So it's a double for Dickerson, his eighth of the year. And while there was that delay for the replay review, Velasquez continued to throw a few warm-ups. Troy Tulowitzki is the batter. Tulowitzki, a 303 hitter, has seven homers. He's driven in 34 runs. And has three career homers in this ballpark. He 
gets a first pitch breaking ball and it's strike one to Tulowitzki. You know I could probably make an argument or that play could make an argument for having the yellow line actually up at the top of the the railing type fencing above then right. you take all questions out true. That's a quirky place for the ball to land we haven't seen any there. Foul back. No balls two strikes it does create a really difficult angle and the second base umpire is the one who has to look in from that angle and decide. Remember when this ballpark opened the yellow line was actually at the top of what would be the bottom portion of the bullpen fencing just above the 362. Yes. We've seen balls actually land on top of that railing. Don't you think that would take the question mark out on that play? If, I do. If you took the line all the way to the top of that that rail fencing, it would. One ball and two strikes. Carlos Gonzalez on deck. Rockies are in the middle of the pack and run scored in the National League. It's two and two to Tulowitzki. They have hit 301 as a team with runners in scoring position. Tulowitzki drove in a run last night, going one for four. He singled in the sixth inning. He started and did he go? Yeah. The appeal went to Bob Davidson, who was nodding. Tulowitzki's a strikeout victim, two outs. Yeah, I think Bob was nodding to the shaking of the head of Tulowitzki. No, I disagree with your shake. I'm going to trump you with a nod. Yeah, that slider induces the bat to start. Question is, did it go through? And this is the one that tells you. Yeah. yeah that bat flips out past the front of the plate. Velasquez really broke it off. Now it's Carlos Gonzalez. He didn't play in last night's game. Lefty Dallas Keiko started. Gonzalez at 242 with seven homers, has 20 runs batted in. Nolan Arenado's on deck. Gonzalez fouls it there strike one to the 29 year old outfielder from Venezuela glad to see that breaking ball on the first pitch. You can't get into that pattern of having that first pitch be fastball all the time because you hear first pitch a strike and a lot of times it comes along with fastball hitters know that. Gonzalez had several injury problems last year. And drove in 38 runs all of last season, still trying to recapture that form from earlier in his career. Inside. One and one. There's that corner where the ball landed on the double. So did it hit the ledge and pop up in the air? Doesn't appear that that would be the case. On the changeup, it's one and two. Good movement on that pitch for Velasquez. And there you get a peek at what the changeup can do. You've got to honor that fastball that goes mid 90s and beyond. And now you flip that changeup up there, and it's just a weak, feeble swing. It's two and two to Carlos Gonzalez, who in his first full season. Hit 336 in 2010 with 34 homers, 117 runs batted in. He was third in the MVP voting that year. He's not had a year approaching that since then, although he's had some decent seasons. Fouls that one, and the count stays at two and two. Cargo's a 294 career hitter. With a 520 slugging percentage. And as you can see, the production has fallen off with some injuries. 
but in 2013, 367 on base average, and he drove in 70. He had 391 at bats that year. Tap to the right side for Velasquez, and he tosses to Chris Carter. No runs, one hit. A close call on what was almost a homer, but it's a zero. And coming up, it's Springer, Correa, and Altuve in the Houston first against lefty Chris Russell. And the Astros starting lineup is brought to you by Southwest Airlines. George Springer has been on fire lately. He is the leadoff man and the right fielder for this game today. It's Carlos Correa at shortstop. Jose Altuve is back in the lineup at second base, sitting out three games with a strained right hamstring. Evan Gaddis, the DH, Chris Carter at first, Hank Conger, the catcher. Domingo Santana is in left field. Luis Valbuena at third base, Jake Marisnik, the center fielder. On the mound for the Rockies. Left hander Chris Russon. He's 28 years of age and he's been around the big league since 2012. Previous three years, portions of those years with the Cubbies, work primarily from the bullpen now. This is his 23rd, make that 24th career start. Has never faced the Astros. George Springer is the first man to face him. He had quite a game last night. He's now on an eight game hitting streak. 16 for 32 in the last eight. There's strike one. On the first pitch last night, he hit a single to right field. He followed with two home runs going three for four in that game last night. So 269 is his current average with 10 homers. He's driven in 23. And this leadoff spot has definitely agreed with George Springer. Well, if he wanted to go ahead and shoot another one to right field, the first pitch he got there up and away. Would have been ideal, kind of a high strike, and I think George might have thought it was up. 407 in the month of June for George. He's now hit 30 homers in his first 137 games. That's a franchise record for the Astros. One and two. He's been on base in 19 of his last 35 plate appearances. In June, he's second in the American League in on base percentage. Little tap to third base. Barehanded. Arenado cannot get him. It's an infield hit and a nine game hitting streak for George Springer. Yeah, you can eat that ground ball. There is no way you throw out George Springer. And you can see the smiles just ready to pop on his face. He's starting to really feel it. He gets a change up, stays on it enough to make contact, and oh, wonderful things can happen when you do make contact. That's really a fine effort by Arenado. Very good effort. Springer with 13 steals in 15 attempts is aboard for Carlos Correa. Correa, a 3-10 hitter, has two homers, four runs batted in. This is his eighth major league game. A 
Round a bunt and he takes strike one. Correa had three hits last night. To get to those numbers and he's been on base. In all seven of his major league games so far. One of five players in club history to do that in his first seven major league games for the Astros. Throw goes over to first base. Correa is the youngest player in the majors at age 20. Might be the most veteran like in his approach. True. Let's say Altuve is on deck. But young Byron Buxton with the Twins and that triple in his major league debut, he can really run. We're well, talking about what the two highest rated players over the last couple of years in the minor leagues. Correa and Buxton were drafted one and two overall in 2012. Now they're both in the big leagues. Springer goes and it's foul back. It's one and two. That must have been a hit and run. That was a late leave for George down at first base. Happy birthday wishes to Rilo Coleman, a member of our crew. Who always gets here early, of course, for a 110 start at Minute Maid Park. Today was certainly advisable with the weather problems in this area. And it has not been bad so far. Both teams fly out for Denver after the game today. Bouncer foul first base side. Keeps the count at one and two. Oh, the anguish displayed by that fan. And outside there is rain. Forecasts much more of same. Bring the statues in. <laughs> well, we've seen estimates that there may be five to seven inches in some areas, maybe more in other areas. Tropical Storm Bill. That's for Bill Warrell, by the way. <laughs> it's got an ominous sound. <laughs> it does. It? The Astros have really scored runs on this homestand. They won six to three last night after a 13 to nothing conquest of Seattle Sunday. Having lost Saturday eight to one, they had won 10 to nothing Friday night. He was leaning a little bit towards second. Springer gets back. It's a Bach call. Bach and Bob wasn't going to take that on. That uh, stride from Russin just really didn't make its way toward first base. And you're not going to get away with that with Bob Davidson. Watch this drop it kind of somewhere in between no man's land. Springer is balked into scoring position with a 1 2 count. Russin is a native of Detroit. Strike to Correa, and that's out number one as he looks at third strike. Altuve will follow. Russin pitched at the University of Kentucky. Let's see what we can take from this pitch. Yeah. Right there in that down and in quadrant. Very well spotted. Russell pitched very well in his first two starts with the Rockies this season, coming up from Triple A Albuquerque. But last time out, he lost six nothing in Miami Thursday, giving up 11 hits and six runs in five and a third innings. Jose Altuve is in the number three spot, returning to the lineup. Takes the breaking pitch, ball one at 290. Jose has five homers, 27 runs batted in. He's tied for eighth in the American League with 72 hits, and he's hit 354 against lefties. He said the hamstring feels good. Inside, 2 0. It's quite a year. Mr. Biggio headed for Cooperstown in July. Mr. Altuve perhaps headed for another All Star game. Coming off the batting title last year. 317 with men in scoring position. And it's 3 0 to Jose, who has taken 15 walks this season.
Diego Padres have named their Triple A manager Pat Murphy to take over the big league club. Altuve looks at it. It's a strike and 3 1 with Evan Gaddis on deck. The Astros have dominated the Rockies here in Houston. 55 and 30 is their record here in Houston, including Astrodome games against Colorado. It's 31 and 13 at Minute Maid Park. Springer dancing off second. There's a line shot to left in for a hit. Springer's being sent to the plate. And here's the throw from Brandon Barnes and the tag. Safe. He got in as the throw came in to the catcher McHenry. With a head first dive, Springer makes it one to nothing, and Altuve returns to the lineup with an RBI single. You know, you shouldn't be able to physically make that. Springer appeared to me to still be shy of the third base bag when this ball was picked up in left field, sharply hit by Altuve. And let's hope that that's a sign of things to come. But watch Springer. Hit the bag. Oh, yeah, he's two plus stride shy of third base and still makes it. That is just really moving it. Look at that effort as it gets to the last 10, 15 feet toward the plate. Wow. Evan Gaddis rolls one. That's a fair ball up the line. McHenry underhanded toss and he gets him. Out number two advancing Altuve. To second base. Now back to that Gary Pettis decision, a very bold decision to send Springer. It did not look as if it would work out too well, but it certainly did. You know, watching that replay there, you could see how far George was from third base when the ball was actually in the hands of the left fielder. And at this point, after a good turn at the bag, he is just bringing the mail. He went at it hard at the end there. That's quite a head first dive. Chris Carter now has Altuve at second and two outs. Carter was 0 for 3 with a walk in last night's game. And Conger's on deck. Ball one to Chris. At 203, he has 11 long balls. 31 runs batted in for Carter. Carter's hit 299 in his last 22 games. AJ Hinch and Evan Gaddis talk. Now they'll put him on. An intentional walk, the 36th walk for Carter this season, will bring Conger to the plate with men on first and second and two outs. Russell is a major leaguer is six and ten with a four point six eight ERA and Walt Weiss will give him an opportunity now to get Conger and get out of the inning after allowing one run. Defensively for the Rockies here this afternoon in the outfield from the left to the right former Astro Brandon Barnes John Blackman in center Carlos Gonzalez in right field left side of the infield. Nolan Arenado and Troy Tulowitzki on the right is DJ LeMayhew and Ben Paulson. Michael McHenry he is behind the dish. Hank Conger, the switch hitting catcher, comes up with two outs and two on. McHenry giving signs to his infielders. Conger with three homers, eight runs batted in, is hitting 206. He drove in three on Sunday against Seattle, going one for four. That included a two run double for Hank. This is his 19th start. And there's strike one. Seven of the 14 hits by Conger have been for extra bases this season. That was the perfect example of a hitter going to the plate looking for a first pitch fastball and was going to tee off and he got the change instead. It's one and one with Domingo Santana on deck. There's been quite a buzz around the ballpark and no doubt around Major League Baseball with the New York Times story that the St. Louis Cardinals are being investigated by the FBI for hacking into the Astros computer. Outside it's two and one. Michael S. Schmidt of the New York Times broke that story. 
allegedly the Cardinals have stolen closely guarded information about player personnel. And Tom Brady inflated footballs or deflated. <laughs> two balls, two strikes. Well, evidently, the uh, Cardinals did some checking into the Astros' computer, thinking that uh, some of their information may have been passed along. And the intrusion did not appear to be sophisticated, according to the article. Tap third base line and foul for Arenado. That's quite a play, though. <laughs> wow, that was an exciting foul ball. Springer got an infield single, and Arenado had a jam. He was well laid on George, but this effort—I don't know if I always want my third baseman throwing on the run like that. He's got a chance maybe to set the right foot, but if you get it done correctly, well, it just makes for a nice highlight reel. He puts on a show on a foul ball. Conger looks at strike three, and that ends the Astros first. They come away with one run on two hits, and it was a hustle. George Springer sent home by Gary Pettis. He makes it ahead of the Brandon Barnes throw. One nothing. Astros baseball on Root Sports is presented by Southwest Airlines. Book your low fare now at southwest.com. And by Jack in the Box. Try the new Double Jack today only at Jack in the Box. Picnic in the park after the game Sunday. All the Astros players and their families were there. The fans got a chance to come out and be a part of it and contribute to the charity. Building baseball fields in the inner cities. Picnic with Carlos Correa. That's not a bad deal. Like that hat? I love it. Stylish. I think that may be the lid he showed up in the big leagues with in Chicago. It did appear to be the same one, in fact. Nolan Arenado with a 270 average has 16 homers, 50 runs batted in, ranking uh, in the top 10 in several categories. First pitch breaking ball, strike one. Was that the change, Ash? That looked like the Yacker right over the top on that breaking ball. Well, he's advertised that he's not going to throw exclusively first pitch fastballs today. Leading into the ground and it's no balls, two strikes. Let's see if we can see that that first pitch come out. I would say both of those, yeah. And see, it's he's going to spin it over the top, and it's not exactly 12-6 as it comes out of his hand, and yet the uh, the result was very 12-6 like. Right on that breaking pitch, and he hammered it for a leadoff single on the 0-2 count. Well, that young man looks very good. He's a terrific player. Watch him stay on a third consecutive breaking ball. 
showing that good hitters will figure it out. That's a good curveball. There's no debate about that. But Arenado saw enough to be able to work the work out the kinks. Well, our old buddy is coaching first base for the Rockies, Eric Young. He's alongside Arenado with Ben Paulson batting. Foul back by Paulson, the first baseman today. There's EY, who was, uh, of course, the analyst on Astros pre and post game shows for a couple of years here before putting on the uniform again and returning to the lines as a coach. If he just would have brought a little energy to that analysis, oh, John. He oh. was high energy on those shows. You're right. His son's quite a player in this area. It's one ball, one strike, and his older son, of course, Eric Young Jr., has been in the major leagues, currently at AAA. What a baseball playing family. I bet that splits his his need to worry so much about his own son in the big leagues. <laughs> you got your own job, your detail with your club to, to work out. You bet. Two balls and a strike to Ben Paulson. He was recalled from Albuquerque May 19th. And he's hit 304 since then. Justin Morneau is still on the disabled list. He would have been the first baseman for the Rockies. There's a line shot at Low Bridges. Him diving stop Correa. Correa guns over to Carter. Magnificent play. Diving to his right up the middle and then plenty of arm to get Paulson on the ball that Lowbridge Velasquez. What are you saying? I mean, this guy's making all the plays, routine and otherwise. Wow. And then watch him come. He comes up over the top almost all the time and he brings it. He's got the classic great arm to play shortstop. <laughs> Looked like Chris Carter was ready to <laughs> take off the glove and applaud. You see that look from Carter? Yes, you did. That is some kind of a play. Now Michael McHenry with a runner at second, Arenado in one out. Glittering effort. What gets lost in that play a bit is Vince Velasquez taking a line shot right back over him. But yeah. Talk about awareness. And there's just nobody to flip the ball to. He knows that right away. Makes the play on to first base. One way out to left center field. A long run for Marisnik. That one kicks back off the wall. Goes by him. A run scores to tie it. 1 1. Marisnik will throw in toward third base. No relay made. And McHenry winds up with an RBI triple. And the Rockies are hitting some carom shots out to left center field off that high wall. Well, these umpires are being severely challenged with a couple of these balls that you talk about. That fastball finds the heart of the plate. McHenry finds the heart of the baseball. And what did this find? Yeah, it's a good call. Another one. Umpires are dead on it here this afternoon. Well, McHenry gets his third triple. That's his 11th RBI. And it's a 1 1 game. He's at third for Brandon Barnes. Well, on now. There's the umpire there, David Rackley at second. Infielder is going to stay back up the middle on Barnes. And it's ball one. Brandon, a 3 0 3 hitter, has no homers, six runs batted in. He played uh, right field last night, going 0 for 3, scoring a run. Still making all the highlight reels with his fantastic catches in the outfield as well. Very aggressive hitter. That's a strike, and it's one and one to Brandon Barnes. He's checking closely down to third base to see if there might be the notion of a squeeze. It's too cold, the coach there. The Astros drafted Barnes in the sixth round in 05, traded him to Colorado with Jordan Lyles for Dexter Fowler. This one gets by the catcher Conger, but no advance by McHenry because it kicks right back to Hank. That 
it's a difficult decision for the runner at third in this ballpark. Very difficult. This ball kicks right up into the screen and it kind of just flips it back toward Conger. Big break for the Astros. Watch as this scoots on by. Kicks right on up, catches that screen and kind of throws it back a bit. Looks at it. That's a great pitch. It's two and two to Brandon. See the runner's reaction down at third base. And where Conger picks up the ball just isn't that far from home plate. He could almost sprint back that way. True. Now the infield has moved in with two strikes. And Barnes went for it and struck out on appeal to Bob Davidson. That's a big strikeout for Velasquez. Two outs now. Talk about a tough at bat and with a man at third base. That'll sit you down in a rough way. A couple of check swings, a very rough pitch down and away for a called strike. Let's see what this breaking ball does to the bat of Brandon Barnes. And yeah, you got to call that one. D.J. LeMahieu, the number nine hitter, despite the fourth best average in the National League of 333, has three homers, 30 runs batted in. He's fifth in hits with 75. How's this guy batting nine? What if that's your son? Are you sending on a little bit of mail toward the skip? Anonymous, of course. Two outs and men in scoring position, 458. So maybe Walt Weiss. Had some uh, knowledge that he'd be coming up in this situation batting nine. It's 2 and 0. Mayhew was the leadoff man last night. He went 0 for 4. He's just been locked in this season. In for a strike, two and one. LeMahieu, a former Chicago Cub, came in a trade to the Rockies after the 2011 season. He's right there among the hit leaders. D. Gordon with 93 hits. Goldschmidt hit a big homer last night for Arizona. Off the plate, it's 3 1 to LeMahieu. Now for the moment Velasquez is not showing the consistency that uh, you'd like to see from him trying to stay in the in the strike zone. Brent Strom hoping he can find the solution here falling behind this number nine hitter. And he blew it by him. Three two now. Well that's a good sign. Pure gas. Yeah, when you can reach back and do this with at least some of the major league hitters, it puts you in that special category. Fastball tied him up and he fouled it back. Astros starting pitchers have a 4.07 collective ERA. Overall, their staff is fourth in the American League. Bullpen has been magnificent. Lance McCullers Jr. came out after five no hit innings Sunday and a 13 0 win. Foul back. Hey, win this battle, Come on, man. Essentially, we're calling this a four game series, two games here and two games in Colorado. And it resumes tomorrow night. Astros pregame at 7 o'clock. Brett Oberholzer and Kyle Kendrick at 740. This will be the eighth pitch to LeMahieu. Fly ball, deep center field, Maris Nick. Way back, it's over his head, bouncing out of play for an RBI double and a two to one Rocky lead. LeMayhew drives in his 31st of the year. That's his 10th two base hit. Not 
sure that Jake Marisnik had the best of reads on this ball, but I also am not sure that if he had that maybe he still wouldn't have been able to get back to it. That breaking ball stays right through the heart of the plate. LeMahieu does not look like a nine hitter. Yeah, when you figure that one out, let me know, will you? Now he's batting ninth. I'm give Tony LaRusso a call. Okay. Charlie Blackman's the batter. He struck out in the first. Area strike one. It's hard to figure how a guy who's among the league leaders in batting average and hits with an OPS of over 800 is hitting ninth. But Lemayhu was right there to come through with two outs and a man in scoring position. One ball, one strike. And there are many managers, A.J. Hinch included, who will tell the media every now and then. A lot is made out of the batting order. Too much sometimes. Two balls and a strike. For me, it's not so much the batting order. It's about when you get guys hot. And if you can get three, four plus guys hot in your lineup, you got a chance to win on a steady basis. That's why I think there are streaks in this game so much. It's about guys getting hot. Line shot into right. That's a hit. LeMahieu around third coming to the plate to make it three to one. And the Rockies put together a nice second inning rally. That's their fourth hit. Two singles, a triple, and a double in this rally. That Straub's coming out. Let's see what Blackman is able to do. He gets center cut. U.S. Prime right there. And that's pretty well center cut as well. Yeah, the, the message to a young man like this, and you have to know him to know what to relay, but hey, you're stuck. Is plenty to succeed. Now let's go from thrower to pitcher. And what we've seen of Velasquez, he's got the abilities. It's not just a fastball, he's got a really good looking breaking ball, change up that could be more effective than it currently is with more use. Corey Dickerson will bat. He nearly hit a homer to left center field. It was a double in the first inning. Rockies have pounded five hits so far. Three for extra bases. Infield shifted around, playing him on the pull side. And the throw goes over to first. Blackman, we mentioned earlier, has 14 steals and 18 attempts. And it's a good percentage for him. Another note on that New York Times article. The reason this investigation could be so monumental, the article says, is that there's never been a case of hacking between two pro sports organizations. Runner going, one hop throw, not in time, and it's a steal for Blackman, number 15. Another nice job by Carlos Correa. This one hop throw had a chance of scooting on by, and not really sure how Correa caught this ball, what appeared almost behind the runner. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's it. Come on now. Here we go. Oh, somehow evades the runner sliding into the bag, and Correa <laughs> magically comes up with it. Done that twice in two games now. Conger has to come up with that one out of the dirt. One and one. Now, apparently, the uh, investigation. Has revealed that uh, the hacking into the Astros computer system took place from uh, a residence where two Cardinals employees live. That's a foul ball. One of those guys, Fred Bird. Well, of course, Twitterverse is having a lot of fun 
with this. Fred Bird is pictured at the computer in one of the <laughs> Twitter photos. It's a beautiful yeah. shot. Yeah. Rockies are already three for seven with runners in scoring position. That took some good investigative reporting to get that picture too, didn't it? Swing and a miss by Dickerson. He's down on strikes. Conger with the throw to Carter. And in the second, the Rockies grab the lead, coming up with three runs on four hits and stranding a runner. They lead it three to one. Santana will lead things off for the Astros here as he was called up uh, arrived in Houston last night from Fresno but excited for the opportunity uh, he had a short stint with them in the majors with the Astros last year didn't go as planned but man he has been tearing it up in AAA this year he said he's been working a lot with the hitting coach in AAA and the staff on just trying to get right getting better pitches to hit uh, and he's feeling really good too he said he's Coming in this time with a lot of confidence, guys, and we hope that he maybe gets that first major league knock today. And that's what he has a chance to do right here. Taking strike one as he returns to the big leagues after going 0 for 17 with the Astros last season with 14 punch outs. 320 this year at Triple A Fresno. Bouncer goes to second. LeMayhew on to first. One out. Santana is here because uh, Colby Rasmus has been placed on the bereavement list with his grandmother dying, and that will be a three day absence. Well, may I say that had bat a whole lot better than what we saw in that glimpse last year. And so loosen up, have some fun, let it fly. Right. Luis Valbuena is up next. He's hitting 181, has 14 homers, 26 runs batted in. Leading the club in homers. That's ball one. Former Astro infielder Matt Dominguez, who had been designated for assignment by the Astros June 8th, has cleared waivers, has been claimed off waivers rather, by the Milwaukee Brewers. One ball, one strike. Evidently, he's going to their Triple A club. Aramis Ramirez is the current third baseman for Milwaukee. A little looper over third base, and that's a foul ball. Valbuena was not running. He had a very good view of that ball landing foul. I know what my flares do. Did you see the bunt last night by Crush Davis of Baltimore? <laughs> Crush dropped down a bunt. He crushed it. He popped it up. It landed over third base fair and then took a kick into foul territory which made it a fair ball hit. 
because the infield was shifted around so far on him nobody was close to where that ball oh, so it was one of those shift efforts with the bun and he just hammered it huh yeah popped it up over third base and landed fair just inside the left field line it's just going to increase his confidence out to left field Barnes is back Barnes backing off the wall now Buena has hit one out he goes up oh and that's number 15 for the club leader three to two ball game that's 27 runs batted in for Balbuena. Wow. He knows his surroundings, doesn't he? Take advantage of those Crawford boxes. Game on a one-two pitch. Now you have to, when you when you watch fly balls like this, does your mind wander like mine and wonder what this ball does at Boston's Fenway Park? And I don't know. Is that up on the monster? Does that somehow find its way out? It's up on the monster. I think you're right. Jake Marisnik takes ball one. Jake had 243. He's trying to stop that free fall for his batting average. He has four homers, 19 runs batted in. Of course, he plays a superb center field. Two balls, no strikes. That has kept him in the lineup against lefties. It's 3 0 to Jake. And also, his ability to run the bases and steal bases is a real asset. But his OPS has dropped below 600 now. In first strike, and it's 3 1. The Valbuena homer was measured at 337 feet. Risnick snapped an 0 for 14 with a ground rule RBI double Sunday. Fouls that one back, and it's a full count to Jake. What was the crush Davis bunt measured at? Uh, it was about uh, 94 feet. That's great stuff. Yeah. Well, why not? They're giving him a hit. Yeah. I, I think more guys ought to take him on that. All right. Arenado spins, throws, and gets Marisnik. This man is not human at third base. You can't measure a guy's abilities in a couple of days, can you? Well, maybe you can. <laughs> what we've seen says this guy can really play down at third, and he swings the bat well. Wow. Look at him go. Might have missed outside the corner by a half an inch on that throw to first base, but... Okay, might have been a strike. He made it look very simple. George Springer reached on an infield hit, was balked to second, scored on the Altuve single to left. They strike one to George. His batting average has really climbed in recent weeks, 272 right now. Tulowitzki. Takes care of the third out, and the Valbuena homer pulls the Astros two within one, three to two Rockies after a couple.
An exciting day at the ballpark uh, for the future of the franchise. Signing the Astros' second pick, but fifth pick overall in the Major League Draft uh, just recently. Kyle Tucker, the outfielder who is the younger brother of Preston Tucker, currently on the Astros' 25-man roster. Not in there today, but the family is here, of course, because you signed Kyle, it's good to have you with us. A big day for you yesterday and your family. Take me through the day. What were you feeling as you signed the contract and then put on a jersey and took BP with the team? Yeah, it was exciting coming out here and, you know, with my family being here and signing. And, you know, I got I got the opportunity to go on the field and meet some of the players and hit with them, too. So it, it was an exciting day. And I seen on the cake being watching your brother play, right? Yeah, definitely. definitely. Preston out of this. Yeah. <laughs> well, just... The idea of you two putting on the same uniform, uh, you starting off in the Gulf Coast League, but wearing the Astros on your chest, how exciting is that? Maybe with the opportunity of you guys playing together one day. Yeah, it is exciting. You know, hopefully, I'll, I'll get up here soon to be able to play with them, but you know, just being able to put on the big league uniform is something special. We mess with Preston a little bit just because of how different you guys look. I know you'll probably get that a lot, but physically, two completely different guys uh, when you're staying next to each other. But are there similarities in the way that you guys play? Um, you know, we're, we're both intense. You know, we, we, are, we are both ball players. We, know, we, we always try and win and do, do what we can for the team. I hear you guys are really competitive, but that's the way you were growing up. Give me an example. Um, we would just, you know, we play with ball in the backyard, that, that'd be intense, you know, a few, few broken windows. But, um, you know, competitions with eating, who could eat the most, and, you know, just little stuff like that. You're 18 years old, so you graduate from high school and then you get drafted. What's this period of your life been like? Um, it, it's been exciting. You know, finally graduating high school and, you know, having the opportunity to play, play, play for the Astros now is, you know, it's something special and I'm looking forward to it. You've got an older brother to ask advice. Has he told you anything about playing baseball at the professional level? Um, you, you just kind of got to watch what the veterans do. And, you know, they, they've been here. You kind of kind of got to watch them and see how they act. And, you know, it, it's more of a learning experience as you go up. Awesome. Well, good to have your family here. Sorry Preston isn't in there. Maybe we'll see him off the bench later. But you got to see him yesterday. Very cool for this Tucker family. Congratulations, Kyle. We look forward to seeing you in the future. Thank you. Guys, up to you. Thanks, Julia. Great to have him in the organization. Carlos Gonzalez has a 1-1 count after Tulowitzki struck out. That's the fifth strikeout for Vincent Velasquez. He says Vincent is fine or Vince. Preston watching today with the lefty on the mound. It's one and two. Rockies opening day starter Kyle Kendrick takes the ball tomorrow night at Coors Field against Brett Oberholzer. Thursday the day game finds right hander Dave Hale going for Colorado versus Colin McHugh. It's two and two. Astros are five and one against the National League club so far in interleague play. Foul back. Rockies are 0 and 3 against the American League, and they have lost 12 straight games on the road in interleague play. Ask any one of their players why, and you get a whole lot of versions of I don't know. Ball foul keeps the count at two and two. Yeah, they probably are not into that kind of a stat, right? I, I just can't see where it means anything. We eat at bad restaurants on road games when we're in the other league. You found bad restaurants on the road? Well, I seek them out, Ronnie. Nothing but the worst for me. Bounced and there's one infielder there, Valbuena. He made the play. He had to make out number two. Watch every out of market game live or on demand in true HD on over 400 mobile and connected devices with MLB.tv Premium. Real time highlights, live look ins, pitch tracking, and more. 
blackout and other restrictions apply, visit MLB.tv for the details. Well done by Valbuena, moving back to his right. Nolan Arenado, single to start that go ahead rally in the second inning. He hit an 0 2 curveball. Fouling that one back, he falls behind 0 and 1. Nothing was withheld on that swing. No. He does give you effort, doesn't he? Last year he hit 18 homers all season. He has 16 right now. One ball, one strike. Now he has taken a nice advantage of Coors Field. 11 of those bombs at home. Of course, that's where the Astros are headed. They need to take advantage of the friendly confines. Two balls and a strike. Last year, Nolan hit 16 of his 18 at Coors Field. So that leaves you wondering if he played for another club, exactly who would he be with the bat? I think we know who he'd be with the glove. This one, a liner goes up the left field line and foul. Well, that shot says you ought to hit a lot more home runs. He is tagging some line drives at this game. This man has some tales to tell. You wouldn't believe what that ball looked like coming at me. Strikeout number six for Velasquez. Three to two Rockies in the third. Kick off your weekends at Minute Maid Park with the best fireworks show in town, presented by Marathon Oil Corporation. The next Friday night fireworks is Friday, June 26, when the Astros take on the Yankees. For more info, visit astros.com slash fireworks or call 1-877-9-ASTROS. Yes. Thanks, Julia. That should be a huge series of four games set with the Yankees. And that's always well attended here in Houston, their only trip, of course, all season long. Later on this summer, the Red Sox will be here for their only trip as well. The Yankees will be followed by the Kansas City Royals. So that's going to be a nice seven game span for the fans. Three to two, and the hits are five to three as well in favor of the Rockies as the Astros come up in the home third inning. Correa, Altuve, and Gaddis to bat for Houston. Carlos struck out looking in the first. 
Happy birthday wishes to Joanne Hudis, new Astros fan. A couple members of uh, Matt Hudis family, his mom and dad, are here in attendance from Virginia. Correa looks at strike one. Carlos takes that one. It's a one ball, one strike count. A little bit more on the investigation by the FBI into the St. Louis Cardinals. And uh, it's telling that Major League Baseball is already calling it an illegal breach rather than an alleged illegal breach. According to one person on Twitter, Michael McCann of McCann Sports Law. So he's saying someone broke the law. In type, and it's two balls in a strike. Make it three and one. Fly ball left field. Brandon Barnes moves in for it. One out. Jack in the box takes us inside the box score. And Jose Altuve with his chase percentage out of the strike zone going a little bit larger this year. 37.2 swing percentage. And the batting average has dropped from 285 last year to 213 this year on pitches out of the strike zone. Slugging percentage down as well. It's kind of one of those numbers I'm not sure how to feel about. Obviously pitches in the strike zone his numbers are down this year from last year maybe not as much but you can see from last year's numbers that he hit pretty darn well on pitches that were out of the strike zone he's a free swinger and when he gets hot he can hit just about anything Jose Altuve if he would not run quite as hard today considering the hamstring strain that's cost him three days might be a little ouchy and he said well today yes. Watch him hit a little infield dribbler and see how <laughs> how he plays that out. <laughs> it's just hard for him to withhold 100 percent isn't it. I haven't run in years and if I hit a little infield dribbler I'd be running like crazy trying to get a hit. <laughs> he takes it and it's three and one. Interesting that he's had three one counts on both of his trips to the plate today. Batting average on balls in play last season 360 this season 306. Well, that tells a big story. And he has worked the walk. Yeah, his pop-up percentage is higher this year. Well, I'll tell you what I watched over the last month plus is a lot of slow ground balls to the left side. Rolled over ground balls that when he's hitting well, he doesn't hit. So balls put in play. Yeah, that, that number's going to go down considerably when you're stinging it versus when you're something is a little bit off. And I think Jose has had that little bit off thing. And to the extent that he can't figure it out hitting coaches are struggling right now. Evan Gaddis a little roller up the first base line. This one will get through in the center field. Altuve is not running hard. There's no need to. So he's being smart about it on the single by Gaddis first and second one out. Evan Gaddis just gets angry at a breaking ball that stays up. He does a great job of keeping that head and the eyes on the baseball. Gaddis gets another good result. He's been doing that quite often. Chris Carter follows. He drew the intentional pass in the first inning. And Conger's on deck. Strike one to Chris. Well, it's been suggested on television widely in the Houston area that employers 
encourage their employees to go home early today if they did in fact report at all. One ball and one strike. I didn't get that memo. No. We don't want to be encouraged not to come to work, Ash. That's how you're going to play it, huh? <laughs> Two balls and a strike. This isn't work. Not until contract time. Well, people came, of course, from out of town to see this game. They were not going to be deterred, and the rain has not been a problem so far. Two balls, two strikes. AJ Hinch apparently had to get out the sandbags to use around his house. <laughs> that was an intriguing conversation with him yesterday. Well, that's rough when you get in that that spot, but I thought really that the skipper of the Houston Astros had to sandbag his house. Yeah. Altuve is not very far off second. Russell kept eyeing him, and he got closer and closer. Apparently, Jose left a little bit of fingernail or something behind there. Line drive hit with the left hand primarily went foul. Does Jose let that fingernail stuff grow out during the offseason and then just whittle away over the course of the year, the baseball season? Well, he's a very active guy. I'd like to see him. In the offseason at his home if he stacks cups and I don't know. That was hilarious with him on the bench the last three games, <laughs> working with those cups because he just had to have something to do. He'll have a chessboard down there for him soon. Carter takes a close one. That's a ball and it's a full count on Chris. Okay, so that looks about right. Oh, wait a minute. Could be on a late night show soon doing that. Tulowitzki watches Barnes go for it. Barnes is there, and so is the center fielder Blackman who makes the catch. Two outs with Conger coming up. Conger struck out looking and that left two men on base as the first inning ended. Domingo Santana's on deck. Rockies have five hits. The Astros with four. No errors in the game today. Each club has left two. Grounder goes foul for strike one. In for a strike, and it's no balls, two strikes for lefty Chris Russon. Last year, he tossed the first no hitter in the Pacific Coast League in almost five years for AAA Iowa and New Orleans. His first major league start this year was at Cincinnati. He got a no decision, giving up one run in seven innings, May 26. One ball, two strikes. Then he had uh, another good start. In May. So he was 1 0 with a 0 0.77 ERA for those two games. First home start at Coors June 6th. Seven innings, two runs, and a 10 5 win over Miami. Shooting for win number three of the year today. Conger looks at it, and it's 2 and 2 to Hank. 
And the pitch count is running up there. 62 so far for Russell. The plate and it's a full count. Big pitch coming here. Tries to paint a change up here. Just leaves it out a bit. The runners are set to run. Three, two, two outs. Runners at first and second. They go and Conger hits a smash to the left side. Altuve's trying to get home. He's not running very hard and Barnes will not throw it. The game is tied 3-3. Altuve was not sprinting, but it's an RBI single for Conger, his ninth run batted in. Now, I'm not so sure Jose would have scored had that not been the situation where you're moving on the pitch because he just never cranked that up at all. And that says either he's obeying the command to not run hard today or he just doesn't feel like he can. Another changeup and Conger stays back enough to get it. See, that's about all Jose has. And I think he knew he was going to make the play, but just never opened it up. And now the meeting at the mound after that single tied the game. Pitching coach is Steve Foster for the Rockies. Very interesting because it appeared Barnes had an excellent shot at throwing him out. Brandon cocked his arm, but then he didn't make a throw. You anticipate as a player, and with Altuve the runner at second, a 3 2 count with two outs, you figure there's just no chance in the world that I can throw to the plate and get him out. Then you look up and you realize, whoops, I may have had a golden shot. Now it's Domingo Santana looking for his first major league hit. Runners at first and second. He takes ball one. He grounded to second in the second inning. Santana 0 for 18 to start his major league career. Not a bad spot to get one though. Big cut and it's one and one. Santana signed with the Phillies in 08. He was traded to Houston in the Hunter Pence deal. Had good numbers all the way up the line in the Astros system. Last year, drove in 81 for Oklahoma City, hitting 296. In for a strike, and it's one and two. Santana was the second youngest player in the Texas League in 2013 with Corpus Christi, and the third youngest player in the Pacific Coast League last year with Oklahoma City. Fouls it back. And you can see the numbers at Fresno. Very good in 56 games. We saw some of the video as he planted some long drives beyond the uh, outfield wall. Picked up in that Hunter Pence trade as Brownies talked about. Ranked number 71 as a prospect around Major League Baseball. I think he could pan out better than that. You, know, you, you think a little bit Brownie about Jimmy Paredes mm -hmm. and uh, you know, some of the impressions of him and limited chances with the Astros probably not great and yet at least at a time he led the American League in hitting this year. True. This will be the 30th pitch of the inning for Russell. It's a foul ball. Yeah so some guys are later developing and. Santana certainly has many years to go chronologically if he produces in his baseball career. Young young man at age 22. So many players have come to the big leagues and struggle to hit from the outset. Willie Mays among them. Shot to right field. There's the first major league hit for Santana. 
and the throw to the plate from Cargo up the line. That gives the Astros the lead four to three. What a time for it as Domingo Santana, who was 0 for 18 as a big leaguer, gives the Astros a four to three advantage. Another gutsy send on that first major league hit for Santana. Nice to see as he goes the other way. But as Gary Pettis was waving on Evan Gaddis, all you could do was hope for a bad throw, and the Astros got the bad throw from right field. But if you're Walt Weiss, you have to wonder what is going on with the outfielders. This throw should have easily gotten an out at the plate. Santana is on the board. That's hit number six for the Astros, and it's Luis Valbuena batting. And Conger went first to third as Gaddis scored the important run. Valbuena is fisted on that one, and he puts it back over the screen. Hey, good catch. The guy in the bright blue shirt. have scored roughly 50% of their runs on homers this year but lately a different kind of trend more hits bunched together that one's rocked way out to right center field that's another homer for Balbuena a three run shot his second home run of the day that's 16 homers for Balbuena Thirty runs batted in for the third baseman, and the Astros lead by four, seven to three. I think he has logged the distances in this ballpark very well. Wherever he hits it, in terms of having a shot at the dinger, he seems to get enough. And I think uh, instantly Russin knew that he had given up the long ball. Luis Valbuena is really intriguing with that low batting average, and yet. Leading the club in home runs. Third career multi home run game for Valbuena. That was a 397 footer. Marisnik the batter. There's ball one. And it's one and one. It's got a chance to be your big swing of the ball game. Now, you could also say that Domingo Santana's base hit sets up that chance, as did Congers. Uh, that's the swing that opens the game up. Astros now 24 and 0 in multi homer games this year. Out to center field, Marisnik has a knock. And good for Jake. He needs to find a way to get hot. He is a major league player. Fifth hit of the inning for the Astros. Now George Springer. He's one for two. The Astros now have won 30 straight when they've had a multi home run game going back to last year. Springer had the infield hit to third and grounded out to short. Correa on deck. There goes Marisnik and the throw from McHenry not in time. He steals it. His 11th. Yeah, and that's certainly one of the talents of Jake Marisnik. And Part of why he's such a good outfielder. He runs very well. He's got that body length, a bit like George Springer, maybe more so, where when he gets near the bag with that dive, he really makes up the ground. Brooks Brown is warming up for Colorado. In for a strike. The right hander Brown getting loose with the score seven to three. The Astros have eight hits. In tight. Springer works the count favorably to two one for him. Astros are batting around. They had an eight run first against King Felix Hernandez of Seattle Friday. Got three in the first Sunday. Last night, four in the first. Today, five in the third. 
after scoring single runs in the first and second. Foul back. And check out teams that score a lot of runs. They will have a lot of those big innings. Last night, Colby Rasmus provided a three run homer. Today's three run homer coming from Valbuena. Springer swings and strikes out. Nine Astros come to the plate. What a big hit for Domingo Santana. His first major league hit. That provides the lead. And then Valbuena, the two men on, delivers a three run homer in a 29 pitch inning. Against the Yankees in a four game series June 25th through the June 28th date. For tickets, you can call 1 877 Astros or visit Astros.com. Ben Paulson leads it off in the fourth inning, 7 3 Houston. Vincent Velasquez looking down at his footing, throws ball one. Paulson grounded out, and the diving play made by Carlos Correa to get him was spectacular in the second inning. For a strike, one and one. The Velasquez family is watching on MLB TV in California, hoping that they will see Major League win number one from Vince. It's two and one. Yeah, you gotta love his stuff. There, there's no question. And when he uh, finds a way to just sharpen up the command a bit, I, I think he's got a chance to succeed very well. Late swing there from Paulson makes it a two and two count. It was good to see Julia chat with the Velasquez family. Vince's mom and dad from the seats at U.S. Cellular. In tight, that one cut a little bit, and it's three and two. Vince threw 69% fastballs in his major league debut. Against the Sox. I thought maybe early on, possibly a bit predictably too much. That's a leadoff walk. His first walk of the day. Paulson's aboard, and McHenry follows. McHenry had the RBI triple to left center in the second inning.
Altuve shades up the middle, but he's still on the first base side of second in this double play situation. That's strike one. Well, Velasquez. Toss goes over to first. The Rockies have 29 steals as a team and 47 tries. Paulson has not attempted one. They're not likely to put on a hit and run play, trailing by four in the fourth inning. Don Zimmer might have done it though. There's a strike and it's over too. <laughs> How did Don Zimmer get in this conversation? Well, he would try hit and run plays with the bases loaded. That doesn't seem wise to me. There were no rules. See that change up. I would make a rule about you need to throw this pitch. Uh, I don't know what percentage of the time, but utilize it against righties and lefties. Fouled away. And, you know, those wild games at Coors Field. Blake Street Bombers, we were talking about them a little bit last night. Well, there was just so much offense with those clubs, not only home runs, but stolen bases. I'm sorry, Brownie, but if I were the third base coach for Don Zimmer and he put the hit and run on with bases loaded, I just I couldn't pass that along. <laughs> I'd have to take the heat myself. Oh. He went fishing and McHenry came up dry. Strikeout number seven. Our pitch by pitch is presented by Steel Dealers, as always. Second inning, Brandon Barnes at the plate. And he takes a breaking ball well out of the zone from Velasquez. That one induced the little half swing to make it a ball and a strike. This nearly brought a run in, but Velasquez fortunate with it. Now two and two after a great pitch down and away. And once again, Uncle Charlie visits. The half swing is induced, and down on strikes is Barnes. Now, you see, he's got a nice mixture of pitches. Barnes is jammed on that one. There's strike one. He does have a good mix. We've been hearing from Enos Cabell about Vince Velasquez for years. Enos doesn't miss much. Just saw Enos in the. Dining lounge. He wasn't missing a thing, by the way. Still thin, and he can still hit the ball 300. He'll find a way to beat you. I know that. The hacking Cardinals lead the Twins three to one. They're in the bottom of the fifth inning. With Michael Walker pitching against Kyle Gibson. Fouled away, and it's 0 and 2. Allegedly. <laughs> Feels like a joke starting out of your mouth with each word there. Well, we were talking about uh, excellent second baseman in the American League before the game today. You brought up Brian Dozier. Yep. He is having a very good year for the Twinkies. You know, he's a, a little bit more of a power source than you might anticipate. He is. Dustin Pedroia. He's having a fine season, hitting close to 320, driving in some runs. He's hit nine bombs, always plays a scrappy and fine second base. You mentioned Jason Kipnis of Cleveland. Boy, he's been among the leaders in batting average and hits in the American League. Fly ball out to right center. Marisnik cruising over. Two outs. So there are some choices for the fans, of course, Astros fans and many other fans. Prefer Jose Altuve when they do their uh, computerized work. 35 votes per person are allowed, we're told. Per computer address. Is that what it is? That's where it gets a little, a little oh. sticky. Okay, so if you have multiple devices, for instance, well, an iPhone. Well, it, it depends. Are you using the same address on all of them? That's one address. Oh. But if you. Land yourself a number of addresses. Okay. There you go. LeMahieu had the RBI double. It bounces into the seats in center field. 
He rocks this one out in that same area. Marisnik with a long run gets there and now adjusts his route and makes the catch. There's a zero for Velasquez in the fourth after he put one up in the third as well. Give the Astros a chance to come from behind and grab this seven to three lead. Bottom of the fourth, and Carlos Correa will lead things off in the fourth. Uh, hitting in the two hole, though, behind George Springer, who has been leading off the past couple of days. And we wondered how A.J. Hinch would change up the lineup a little bit with Jose Altuve coming back. Well, he did not touch Springer Correa. Really likes those guys in the one and two hole. But he really likes all the guys that he's put up at the top of the order. Correa, Springer, Marisnik at times, Jose Altuve. He talked about these guys today saying they're very aggressive. Uh, Altuve and Springer, two guys that don't let pitches go by that they can hit. It's just the personality of this team. And he's when he puts guys there, guys, we've seen uh, we've seen a lot of them be successful. Thanks, Julia. There is the first pitch here in the bottom of the fourth inning to Carlos Correa, and it's ball one. Correa was caught looking in the first, hit a fly ball to left in the third inning. It's a one ball, one strike count. Athletics and Padres are underway. No score. Bottom of the first inning in San Diego. They have a new. Uh, Manager Pat Murphy, Ash. I don't get it. I thought the pods were actually positioned decently in a top division. Two very good clubs at the top of the division. But Bud Black, who had been there uh, some nine years, is no longer running the show. Ground ball past a diving LeMayhew into right. Another hit for Carlos Correa. He's been on base in every major league game he's played so far. This is number eight. It's really nice when you see a young player who has power. He uses the whole field. Obviously, he plays very good defense. Minor league numbers say he can steal a lot of bags. Just kind of the quick summation of Carlos Correa, and then it goes way beyond that. He is so mature. Altuve's batting. He has an RBI single and a walk. Has scored a run. And that's strike one. Scott Kazmir is on the mound today for Oakland in San Diego against Andrew Kashner. I thought Bud Black has done, had done a really nice job through the years for the pods. Yeah, they're one game under 500. Manager AJ Preller making the move. Dave Roberts, the bench coach, took over as an interim skipper last night before Pat Murphy was named. It's one and one. The Dodgers are three and a half ahead of the Giants right now, and the Padres have slipped to six games behind, and they're now two games under 500. Yeah, you talk about the pods and 
at the time of the firing they were one game under the Diamondbacks surprised me at the fact that they're a game under 500 they're in striking range yes Astros are playing all those clubs in interleague play a shot Arenado diving from his knees to second LeMay you to first and the Rockies really do it in a spectacular way on a 5 4 3 double play I would say choose not to hit it to this guy if it's in the vicinity you're in jeopardy. Look at this fine third base play. LeMayhew, a big guy, as you talked about at second base, turns a nice double play. And there's no way Jose was going to try to leg that one out under the circumstances. Very wise. Evan Gaddis is one for two. This is the first time he has taken the first pitch in an at bat today. 1 0. Our producer Carl Patterson was doing some research on LeMayhew being 6 4, another 6 4 second baseman. There haven't been too many. One ball, one strike. Were you in on that bit of research, Ash? You know, when I was a teenager, I met a pretty tall second baseman playing in the same high school league I was in, Enos Cabell, at about 100, I don't know what he was, 150 pounds maybe. At, Six six. I don't know how tall Enos actually is, but he was playing some second base college baseball. And he was impressive, even in that body. Mm. One and two. Mariners and Giants scoreless in the early going. Gaddis strikes out. Double play was really something, and then a strikeout followed for Russin. It's seven to three. The Astros lead it through four. Moment in history is brought to you by MD Anderson. After three near misses early in his career, Hall of Famer Tom Seaver finally gets his first career no hitter. That was in 1978 and part of the 4 0 victory over the Cardinals. The 33 year old posts a 2.88 ERA in 200 and almost 60 innings on that year. That with the Cincinnati Reds, he was one of the great ones. Bad he was. I happened to be at that game that night. Were you calling that game? Nope. Seven to three ball game. We go to the fifth inning. Charlie Blackman leads it off. Pure fandom for you, huh? Yeah. Of course, I have touted the fact that I've seen, a, or I saw years ago, the a couple of the no hitters of Sandy Koufax thrown in L.A. And amazing stuff as a fan or as a player. Blackman is one for two, an RBI single. He took ball one, shortening up. It was really something that Seaver, who had that no hit stuff many times, he took the mound, really had not been able to do that as a Matt, even though he came so close, as you mentioned. 
At one point he was within one out of a perfect game against the Cubs and Jim Qualls broke it up with a hit. So there for me I was that kid that idolized Sandy Koufax saw a couple of no hitters won a perfect game. And then I find myself playing along with Nolan Ryan. As he throws his record breaking fifth no hitter surpassing Sandy Koufax and you know kind of on and on with that it was just it was so beyond anything you could ever anticipate in life. Foul back and it's two and two to Blackman. You like to hang out with the no hit guys. It was fun. And yes I. Had I been able to do do so more times I would have gladly been a part of that and Scotty. That improbable uh, just not possible no hitter that clinched the division in 1986. In that Mariners Giants game it's nothing nothing in the second Jay Happ starting for Seattle against Tim Lincecum. Tim has a no hitter through an inning and a third. <laughs> Hope the pressure doesn't get to him. <laughs> but I, know I don't want to forget Ken Force, who threw the, the first one that I yeah. was able to be a part of, and uh, yeah, great stuff. Three two for Vincent Velasquez. He walked the leadoff man in the fourth inning, and he's done it again here in the fifth. He's at 85 pitches for the day. Charlie Blackman takes his place at first, and Dickerson's the batter. Dickerson had a double to left center in the first. He's one for two. And Conger trying to help him through. Conger's coming in for some high marks from the Astros pitchers in interviews after they worked with him. Jason Castro was the catcher when Velasquez made his debut in Chicago last time out. Infielders shift around, playing Dickerson to pull. And that's ball one. So a starter changeup, left hand hitter at the plate. Just trying to watch sequences on Vince Velasquez. Always leave the hitters guessing. It's intriguing. He's going to go right back to the change. And you see what it does. That's a fastball count. Major League hitter oftentimes will try to juice up and simply in front. That's classic lesson teaching, this time by the Young pitcher, second start in the major leagues. That's in the air to left center, Marisnik backing. Blackman will go to first to tag. He does. He's headed for second, and the throw to Altuve. He has it, and he's out. This tag by Altuve didn't come down immediately and he kind of reached still got the out call. But I have touted the arm of Jake Marisnik as being. Maybe the best of center fielders other than Anthony Ghost in all of the major leagues. He can really throw and he throws accurately there. Very nicely done. Altuve put the tag on the left leg of Blackman just before it hit the base. For an 8 4 double play. Two outs now, and here's Tulowitzki. He has struck out both times. That's strike one. Altuve had to dig that one out. Not your normal run of the mill catch and tag play from the outfield. A lot of center fielders are all about their speed and ability to get to balls. For Marisnik, it's a great combination.
boy. Good boy. It's one and one. There's the voice of Brent Strom saying that. A boy on the 0 1 changeup that he missed on. But it was a good notion, and I think that's what Brent is trying to teach. Come on out. Come on, Breaking pitches wide, and it's a two ball, one strike count. Alaska is a second round pick in the 2010 draft by the Astros. Had Tommy John surgery, as you may have noticed earlier, if you were with us. That cost him all of the 2011 season. He was shut down for a month in 2012. In for a strike, and it's two and two to Tulo. Went to the Arizona Fall League. This is his first year on the 40 man roster. After last season, he suffered a lat strain. And that resurfaced in spring training and he was shut down. Last year he missed two months with a groin injury. In the dirt and it's ball three. Three and two. So with the advent of this season he had pitched a total of only 290 innings in professional baseball. Well, if you take that limited number of innings and pitch it and pitch them impressively as Velasquez has done, make a quick ascent. True, he was noticed as we indicated earlier. Fifth full count for Velasquez. And in. he gets swings on that riding fastball. I don't have a number to give you, but in his first start at Chicago against the White Sox, he just had a, a tough time with tons of foul balls against him. Our pitch by pitch presented by Steel Dealers once again. Tulo at the plate. And this was the third inning. He was able to get by with the fastball right through the heart because of the velocity. High cheese as he finishes things off. Just, a, just one of those sequences where you get the quick out because your stuff is so good. Foul back again by Tulo. Right underneath us, and then it kicks down to the level below. Major League hitters, though, if given enough looks at a given pitch, tend to make good adjustments. This will be the eighth pitch Tulo has seen in this at bat. Know how a guy named Troy, while anticipating college ball out on the West Coast, didn't wind up at USC. <laughs> ah, the over shortstop into left center field. It dunks in for a hit for Tulowitzki. He's on with a two out single. Hit number six for the Rockies. Carlos Gonzalez will follow. He's 0 for 2. No shame in this one. Fastball eats up Tulo. But Tulo gets the line drive in the box score. The Cubs 2014 number one draft pick Kyle Schwarber will join them from double A Tennessee for the next six games. And five of them will be in American League parks in which he can be the DH. Will Harris is warming up for the Astros. Well, teams are bringing up talented youngsters right and left this year. There's Harris getting ready. And they've said already that regardless of the week to come for Kyle Schwarber, he will not be staying with the Cubs. He will head to AAA after the game next Sunday. So he's bypassing. <laughs> Triple A to go to the big leagues from double A, but then going backwards to triple A. An interesting pattern for Kyle Schwarber. That was kind of intriguing on the hill. Brent Strom appeared to really have something to say. And I wonder if it might not have been something like, we really want you to get this victory. You got to get through the fifth inning to be credited with the W, and you're going to have to work right now to get it. This may be the last guy you see. Nolan Arenado's on deck. And the 100 pitch mark is just a few away. Oh, 
pull foul. There's strike one on Carlos Gonzalez. He's got three in the second after the Astros took a one nothing first inning lead. Houston came up with five in the third to retake the lead. Bounce foul. Eric Young with another play. He was been peppering that section. Fans are happy with him. No wonder he wanted to get back on the field. He still got it. Ah. Uh, Tap goes foul. Well, we're told, Ash, uh, by the kind folks who have communicated with us during this game today that there are 35 votes allowed from each email address for the All Stars in Major League Baseball. But if you erase those cookies, you can find a way to get some more. I see you doing that all the time. You yeah. have to learn that move. Well, we've erased some cookies, all right. <laughs> Old fashioned kind. <laughs> One and two. <laughs> Evidently, the folks in St. Louis didn't really look into that. The erasing of cookies? Yes. Yeah. Do not leave crumbs. Foul away. Still a one ball, two strike count at the 100. One pitch mark now for Vincent Velasquez. And this very well could be the last many faces. Get your out, you've got a chance to not only help the team win a ball game, but you pick one up yourself. A high shot to right field will get out. That's a two run blast. And it's seven to five. Carlos Gonzalez rips number eight of the season, giving him 22 runs batted in and pulling the Rockies two within two. That's his seventh career homer against the Astros. Looked like a, a breaking ball that was down. And that may be a zone that Carlos Gonzalez has had success with, as you see AJ coming out. But take a look at this pitch. Down around the knees, bottom of the knees. He got it. But he also saw a, at least a few breaking balls in that sequence. And it may have been one too many. Velasquez departs. He will not get his first major league win today. The Astros lead at 7 to 5 with two outs in the fifth inning. Will Harris is on his way, and we'll be right back.
bullpen. We show you Will Harris coming in in relief for the Astros. Will Harris has really put together a fine season to this point. 25th game, 2 0, 0 91. The microscopic ERA, even better, if you will, on that whip. Half a base runner in the inning. And 0 84, the batting average against. He's been spectacular. 36 of 41 batters faced have been retired. Nolan Arenado is the batter now. He's one for two. Line drive, left field corner. That one hops the wall. Picked up by Santana. First pitch double for Arenado, and that's three hits in a row for the Rockies after the double play from eight to four. Nolan Arenado stings the baseball, but he really wasn't running full speed around first base. And Santana might want to make sure to go hard after a play like this. It was kind of a jog down the line, and then he got to first base and realized he's got a shot for a double, and he took off. Now the potential tying run is in the batter's box. Ben Paulson. Paulson's grounded to short and walked. And that's strike one from Harris. Harris has had a remarkable season so far. You talked about the fact that he had retired 36 of the last 41 he faced. Had that long streak dating back to last year without giving up a run. 0 and 2. Take a peek at that double by Arenado. He just kind of getting to first base and whoa, really? I've got a shot. And then he drops it into high gear. But unfortunately, Santana in left field was just kind of in the retrieval flip it back in mode. Santana had a little workout before the game today in left field. He hasn't had many games in this park. One and two the count. And none of that workout included get the ball quickly and fire it back in. It was all just about kind of figuring out angles off of the, the tough board in left field. But for me, that would be the next step is getting him understanding that you've got to hustle to it and fire it back in. Fouled away, still one and two to Paulson. Will Harris began the year with a 16 game scoreless streak. He extended that to 26, including this year. He did not get tagged for a run until May 6th of this season. Started the bat and checked it on appeal to Jerry Lane. Ooh. Two and two. Harris was walking off. Here's our peak. Well, that bat gets out there. Even though it's kind of coming with the body, the bat got out right about to the front of the plate. Velasquez is through 102 pitches, 66 for strikes. There's a punch out and Harris gets his man to end the Rockies fifth inning. They make it a closer game with two runs on three hits. They left a man and it's seven to five Houston.
Root Sports is presented by Southwest Airlines. Book your low fare now at southwest.com. And by GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Visit us at GEICO.com or call 1-800-947-AUTO. 7-5 ball game. Number 27 has returned to the lineup for the Astros. Jose Altuve batting third today as an RBI single in three trips. And the Astros have gotten some runs on the board early, but now Colorado has come back with two in the fifth inning to make it a two run lead for Houston. And the bullpen is coming into use for Walt Weiss. Right hander Brooks Brown is 0 and 2 with a 3.63 ERA. His 24th game of the year. He's been chewing up lefties, but he's also been chewing up righties. Five straight shutout appearances. Is from Statesboro, Georgia, and he pitched for the Georgia Bulldogs. Last year he had 28 major league games in his rookie season. He was a sandwich pick after the first round in 06 by Arizona. Then a trade took him to Detroit, and Colorado signed him as a free agent prior to last season. Chris Carter is up first here in the home fifth inning. He has an intentional walk and a fly ball to center. Infield shifts around, playing him to pull. At strike one for Brooks Brown. Chris Russon in four innings allowed the Astros nine hits, seven runs, walking two and fanning two. Make it three strikeouts. Carter checked his swing, and the count is one and one. There's a delay now in St. Louis with the Cardinals up three to one on the Minnesota Twins. They're in the seventh inning. Foul back and it's one and two. Twins have started to cool off some. But still they're five games over 500 34 and 29. They're two and a half behind Kansas City now. What do you say about the Cardinals. Winning two out of three games over the course of this far into the season, 42 and 21. Yeah, that is really an accomplishment considering the fact that they've won so many and lost so few, and also the injuries that they've had. They have lost key players. Matt Holliday's on the disabled list right now. Adam Wainwright went down before the season started, and they've lost Lance Lynn now. I knew they had some hackers over there on the offensive side, but they've exceeded things. Carter strikes out. One down. What's the bottom of the order done today, Ash? They have done pretty well, Browning. Hank Conger had a big RBI hit. Domingo Santana, his first hit in the big leagues, and it counted. It drove in a run. Luis Valbuena has launched a pair, one to left, one to right field. And then Jake Mersnick. Base hit, stole a base, has created a double play on a fly ball hit to left center field. So the guys are performing very well. Thank you. Well, Buena's had the big day with the two homers. And Conger has an RBI single in two trips. In tight ball one. Rockies relievers have won 10 and lost 9 with a 4.54 ERA for the season. Lately, they've been pitching well on the road. Off the plate for ball two. Rockies relievers have a 2.68 road ERA for the last 57 innings since May 2nd. Santana's on deck. Foul ball by Conger makes the count 2 1 now. Michael Walk has gone six and a third for the Cardinals today, giving up one run to the Twins. Kyle Gibson with six innings of three run baseball for Minnesota to this point, and now they're in that rain delay. The Cardinals are 25 and 7 at home. High to right. 
field. Let's see if this one has enough for Conger. Gonzalez leaping at the wall. That one for Conger does get out, and that's number four for Hank. It's eight to five, Houston. Third Houston home run of the game. That's number 91 for the Astros this season. We'll give you a violent hack, especially from the left side of the plate. But what we've seen so far this year is his launching from both sides has been very effective in that regard. Watch this hack. It's the high cheese. That's tough to get to. He does let that bat fly. Just another bomb for the major league leading home run club. 349 feet. Domingo Santana with strike one. Oh, watch your lips. Ooh. Ouch. No balls, two strikes. Domingo Santana was born in the Bahamas. His father came in to see his major league debut here last year. One ball, two strikes. He did not have much notice before he arrived for this game. So probably didn't have a chance to get anybody from his family here. He's hit by the pitch. Well, if you got to get hit, pick a change up, still going to hurt. Brown just let that change up get away. Right by. I think I might have been trying to get out of the way of that thing. So, on for the second time, painful or not. Valbuena has a pair of homers, four runs batted in for Luis. Hunter takes off. Here's a throw from McHenry, and it goes on into center field after hitting Santana. Santana on his way to third, and he'll make it. Stolen base for Domingo Santana. His first as a major leaguer, and an error on the catcher. Henry's fourth. Oh, nice to see. Apparently that shot in the thigh didn't hurt him. I saw Carlos Correa recently start to pick up all those major league firsts. Keep the talent coming. Now the infielders come in tight. It counts one and zero. Oh. Runner third, one out. Certainly is a different look with this infield in close in this situation. And three infielders between first and second base. Last three home run game by an Astro was by Carlos Lee in 07 against the Phillies. El Caballo. Now 3 0 to Valbuena. What do you suppose El Caballo is doing right now? Boy, I've been doing my searches on a lot of folks, but not the El Caballo. It's got to be on a ranch somewhere, right? I just doubled up the buzz on that one. Pop back. Why not a green light on 3 0 after the two home run swings he's had? Let it fly, big guy. Yeah, I think it's one of the great ways to try to pick up a run. Let a guy who's hot. Swing of the bat, get a fastball and juice it. Just as you said that, we saw Fred Arnold of Minute Maid, the juice company behind the home plate. Valbuena takes the walk. He's good with juice and one, right? Yes, he is. Orange, grapefruit, you name it. Now a 
Uh, we'll get another mound conference. It's eight to five with runners at first and third and one out here in the fifth inning after the Conger homer. There's been a hit batter and now a walk from Brooks Brown. This is the second start of Vince Velasquez that has had a very slow pace to it and I don't know how much you can lay on Velasquez in that regard or if it's just the the, the particular games he's gotten in. Jake Marisnik single to center field in the third. He's one for two. Not only did Kyle Tucker sign with the Astros, but a total of nine players have signed from the 2015 draft class. Ball one to Marisnik. Round pick catcher Anthony Hermelin of Oklahoma was among those who have signed. Fifth round pick right handed pitcher Trent Thornton of North Carolina also among those. And the toss goes to first base. Valbuena is one for one in steel. Two and oh, they say we'll be on the dirty side of Tropical Storm Bill. Ash. Never play on the dirty side of town. No. Are we at Coors Field now? It's starting to feel that way, isn't it? Yeah. Three and oh to Jake Morris. Yeah, I didn't realize you were going to make the trip, Brownie, but good to have you with us. Uh, Howard's Plummer. <laughs> I think he's in the dining room. Yeah. Marisnik looks at a strike, and it's 3 1 to Jake. I hope you didn't mention this, Brownie. I thought I would mention it anyway. The Velasquez family watching on TV today from California. So I did, but it's okay. Oh, sorry about that. Tommy Canley's warming up for the Rockies right now. They might not have been watching then. Fly ball behind second base to shallow center field. Blackman in for the catch. And he fires to the cutoff man. Not deep enough to send him. Two outs. Tomorrow's pitching matchup is presented by Chevron. Care for your car. Brett Overholzer tries to follow up a very good outing last time as he picked up his first one on the year. One and one. ICRA at 225. And it'll be Kyle Kendrick for the Rockies as we open up that two game set in Colorado with these rocks. Kendrick has been touched up. ERA up over that five mark. George Springer's the batter. He's one for three. Ten hits for the Astros. They lead it eight to five. The Springer taking ball one. Well, all kinds of writers are weighing in on the latest reports involving the computer hacking. An investigation by the FBI. Um, Verducci of Sports Illustrated is writing about it as well. Strike makes it one and one to George. Unusual topic. Isn't it? Very surprised to hear it. Bullpen action for the Rockies. Springer fouls it away. One and two to George. Over the last month, George has hit 333 with eight doubles, six homers, 11 runs batted in, 18 walks, and a 426 on base percentage. That 
puts him among the elite. On this home stand, he's eight for 18. That one almost got it. Two and two. Again, the changeup just getting away. Not sure how George avoided that one. That one go and it's a full count. Two outs, runners at first and third. George looking for a pitch. He can ram somewhere. I like a French fry. I don't mind seeing There's the guy in the Springer shirt. Hopes to watch some action here. And that's a foul tip strikeout to end the Astros' fifth inning. Conger goes deep. To give them one run on one hit with an error and two men stranded. It's eight to five Houston after five. Pitch by pitch, once again presented by Steel Dealers. And we check out Vince Velasquez and his work here this afternoon. Very good fastball. Didn't quite get to some of the numbers we've heard about, but 95, 96 topping out. He had a good over the top breaking ball. Mixed in the change up well. But to this point, you'd have to say that fastball is big time now. Can the other pitches kind of match in terms of command? Michael McHenry takes a look at ball one. Will Harris in the game in relief of Velasquez. Allowed a double to Arenado and then struck out Paulson in the fifth inning. Barnes and LeMayhew to follow McHenry. In the air to right center field. Marisnik. One out. Because the starting pitcher Vince Velasquez failed to go five innings. The official scorer will decide if the Astros maintain this lead and win the game. Who gets the win among all the pitchers other than the starter who have worked? AJ Hinch is after a win and he hopes Harris can get Barnes here. Barnes is 0 for 2. It's a 3 and 1 record on this homestand. And if AJ and the Astros get this one, they could set sail for Coors Field. With a sense of real accomplishment, they snapped their seven game uh, losing streak and they've come out of it quite nicely. Especially a homestand that began with Felix Hernandez on the hill for Seattle. Oh, isn't that the point? That, that, was, a, that was a victory that kind of was the, one of those bigger than one win nights. 
What do you think the odds would have been for that game? The Astros had lost seven in a row and they're facing King Felix. I'm going to guess that some of the odds makers who I don't hang with would have had the Astros probably down around 20 25 percent chance maybe to win. Maybe lower. One and two and they got eight runs off him in one third of an inning. Especially coupled with the fact that the Astros were on that skid seven games. They had not been hitting. Two balls, two strikes. That's a hard team to figure, isn't it? It's a hard game to figure. Just when you think you you've got the sure thing, back off. Line into right field for a hit. Barnes is aboard. Brandon one for three. When the Astros win, you win. Every time the Astros win on a Tuesday, you get 50% off your pizza order on Wednesday at Papa John's. Use promo code Astros at PapaJohns.com. Wednesday's always a good pizza night. You're going to take advantage, aren't you? You bet. Tomorrow's Wednesday. LeMayhew had the RBI double in the second. He's one for two. That's over the hump day. There's strength one. You like the uh, hump day commercials featuring the camel? Mike? Yeah. Betcha. Have you ever known people to name camels? I've never known anybody to own a camel. That's a swing and it's 0 2. Tony Sipp is warming up for the Astros. You ever ridden a camel? Not even close. Yeah, that's that's out of my realm. Now I've seen you on safari. I imagine you've tried to do that a bit. No. Camels are scary. Once you get over the hump, everything's fine. They'll eat your hair. Got some camels warming up in the bullpen, I think. One ball, two strikes. They'll eat your hair. Yeah. <laughs> Anything that looks like straw, they're you, eating. You know more facts than that. Uh, <laughs> you're all over the internets, aren't you? Uh, yes, many of them. Takes off. Here's the throw, and it's on the other side of the bag, so the Astros don't get him. Hank Conger's throw a little bit over on the third base side of second, and that's a steal for Barnes, his first. Take a look at the jump by Brandon Barnes. Got out of there pretty well. Hank Conger has not really uncorked his throwing game yet this year. On the other hand, Jason Castro has been dynamite with the throwing game. Correa kept the tag on him in case Barnes had come off the bag. 2 2. That's a foul ball. Is that number nine hitter again up in a situation with a runner at second and one out? So it's worked out well for Walt Weiss with LeMayhew. His hottest hitter on the team being in a position to drive in runs. Still for the life of me I can't figure why a guy with an OPS well above 800 would be batting ninth. And for a strike. Two outs. May he's giving it to Hunter Wendelstead. Now he needs to go take a look at a little video from Root Sports because I think that fastball will be proven to be in the strike zone. That's a good view of it. Two punch outs for Will Harris. 
Velasquez struck out seven. Charlie Blackman is one for two in RBI and a walk. Carter's there with a good play behind first for out number three. No runs a hit in the man left. Middle of the sixth inning, eight to five, Houston. Tuve has fallen behind in the second base all-star vote, but it's a tight race, so it needs your vote, needs your help to make sure he's the all-star game starter for the American League. Make Houston proud and vote Altuve now at Astros.com slash vote. He's fallen behind to Omar Infante of the Royals, and here's Ned Yost on the all-star voting process with our Geico quote of the day. If you don't like it, go out there and vote. Our fans have gotten out and voted. Does eight starters surprise you? Yeah, but once you sit back and think about it, it's really not that surprising. Eight starters and that he, he's right there's eight Royals right now uh, if, if the voting into today maybe would start the all-star game including Omar and Fonte over this guy Jose Altuve AJ Hinch not happy with what he's seeing there he says he just hopes the fans can go out and vote uh, guys this is a tough one we got to get out there we got to do our part it's time to swing into action time to mobilize Julia did Ned Yost just tell us he hasn't thought about it because he said he w was surprised a bit, but then when he thought about it, he wasn't that surprised. Mm. Mm. Julia was swinging into action last night. She was on the computer. That's right. Carlos Correa is one for three. Tommy Canely in the game. And there's a foul ball on his first pitch. Brown in one inning allowed one hit, one run with one walk, two strikeouts for the right hander, Brooks Brown. Canely is a hard thrower who will go with Correa, Altuve, and Gaddis facing him here in the sixth inning. Just his second year in the big leagues, each with the Rockies. Pitched in 54 games a year ago. Broken bat, and it's a foul ball by Correa. 0 oh 2. Canely's fastball is up around 97 some of the time. He's from Latham, New York. To a Division II college, Lynn University in Florida. Youngsters seem to be having a good time. Canley was a Yankees draft choice in the fifth round in 2010. Claimed in the Rule 5 draft prior to last season by Colorado, and he was used 54 times out of the Rockies' bullpen with a 2 and 1 record of 4.19 ERA last year in 68 major league innings. Remind you at all of Rod Beck. Line drive up the right field line, slicing and going foul. Yeah, I could see that. Uh, the, the hair kind of gets in there. He's a big, uh, sturdily built fella. Yeah, I can certainly see Rod Beck. 
Seven games with good numbers for Canely this year. Get a reminder here watching Carlos Correa of some pretty good hitters of the past. Mm, struck him out. That split piece right there will get the job done. And Omar Infante. Guys, guys battling in the vote there for the American League All Star second baseman spot. There's no comparison there in terms of the stats. Again, there are other second basemen who have done very well in the American League this year, but uh, for those of you who love Jose Altuve, get in there and vote. Jose has an RBI single, a walk, and a double play ball in this game. That's ball one to him. He has not run all out in this game after missing three games with a hamstring strain. Smacked out the left center field. Black went over. Two outs. Evan Gaddis will follow. He's one for three. Good at bat for Jose. Stings the ball toward the gap, not quite enough to the gap. Yeah, that's very good work. Is that ball in the strike zone? I don't know. Did he hit it well? Yes. Okay. Again, when he's swinging it well, he'll tend to put the barrel on it almost any place he can reach. Got a single and scored in the five run Astros third. Strike to Evan. Chris Carter's on deck. Ground ball behind third. Nolan Arenado, long throw. Wow. This guy is putting on a clinic today at Minute Maid Park. What a spectacular play. Family out to Minute Maid Park on select Sundays with the Kroger Family Four Pack starting at only 70 bucks. This special family ticket package includes four tickets, four hot dogs, four sodas, and a lot seat parking pass. Get your Kroger Family Four Pack by visiting Astros.com slash value or calling 18779 Astros. Okay. Sounds like a great deal, Julia. Thank you. Nolan Arenado has really made some plays in this game. He's made some to his left. Now he goes to his right. Backhands. That part's tough. This part is ridiculous. 
And I don't know with Evan Gattis running if you might say, well, we'll see if you can plant your foot and make a strong throw, but it doesn't seem to matter for Arenado. That was just a perfectly launched balloon across the infield, and he still gets his man. What a throw. Tony Simpson in the game now. He's pitcher number three for A.J. Hinch. Facing Corey Dickerson. Dickerson's one for three. Strike one to Dickerson. Will Harris went an inning and a third. He gave up two hits, no runs, with no walks. And he struck out two. Sip pitched in the 13 to nothing blowout win here over Seattle on Sunday. One inning, one hit, no runs. Had a couple of strikeouts in that game. That's a strike for him. He's ahead in the count, 0 and 2. Lefties are hitting only 222 against Tony Sip. Chad Qualls currently warming up in the bullpen. Swing and a miss and a strikeout on Dickerson. Tenth strikeout for Astros pitchers today. Yeah, maybe Tony Sip starting to get back in his groove. He hit a little rough patch there. Yeah, I gave up that first pitch homer to Giovanni Soto in Chicago. Coming in with the game tied 1-1 in the seventh inning. Six days ago. Troy Tulowitzki, one for three. And he had given up a couple of homers to Detroit and Baltimore on the road. The third week in May. Strike one to Tulo. 22,245 the paid attendance. With Tropical Storm Bill here. Yeah, that just sends shivers down my spine. Doesn't it though? And we thought Warrell was out of the state. <laughs> one ball and one strike. Brownie you're a tough customer. It's not as if we needed rain here. We'll have eight million mosquitoes all around the place for a while. One and two. That's the least of the problems for the people who were flooded just uh, what a couple of weeks ago. It hasn't been that long anyway. There's a swing by Tulo. And he's down on strikes. That's two in a row for Tony Sepp. Got that slider and changeup working with his fastball here in the inning. This is the changeup as Tulo starts the bat. That you just get to a point where there's no way to hold it back on this pitch. Very little spin on that baseball from Tony Sepp, and it just falls to earth. And Hank Conger is able to come up with it out of the dirt. Carlos Gonzalez with a two run homer in the fifth is one for three. That made it a seven to five game as Colorado came back. But now with the score eight five Gonzalez takes that pitch and it's ball one. Twitter's been going crazy today. That's a shot. It's going foul. It's a long, long way. That's a fair ball over the top of the foul pole. That is a massive home run. That's number two of the day for Cargo and his ninth of the season, giving him a three RBI game and 23 runs batted in for the year. It was over the top of the foul pole. And Bob Davidson signaled fair ball. A.J. Hinch is coming out to check with him. It's eight to six. Yeah, apparently they're going to check this as AJ asks for the review. I hope they've got a good view of the angle. Carlos Gonzalez has been pretty much in a scuffle throughout the season, but not so here today. Yeah, it's not the ideal angle, but 
have to convince me that was a fair ball. Not sure anybody would be trying to convince you of that after looking at that replay. You're not going for that. No. Nope. Yeah, I'd like to see that from right down the line where you actually see the visual. Now, Congo is going to convince his teammates that that one went right over the top of the foul pole. I think the guys in the Rockies dugout are probably still trying to figure out where exactly did that ball go. But is there enough evidence to overturn the call. Yeah that's where it really gets tough and again you're not looking straight down the line. Bob Davidson made the call. He and Jerry Lane the crew chief. Are talking to the crew in New York. Well if we see cargo go pine tar up his bat in the next couple of seconds we'll probably have a good idea of what he views that as. Yeah I think your question is the right one is there evidence there that says no fellas that was a foul ball. Is there a camera from the very top of the stadium. Here's a view of it. Well when you see the baseball from this angle you would say. It's got to be a foul ball, right? Right. But I have a feeling the umpires in New York are going to say that's not down the line. Right. And we can't really determine. It's a foul ball. See? Cargo does not look shocked. No, he doesn't at all. He's the one that had a, a really good view going. Well, he was actually standing at home plate. Sip has allowed three homers in 23 innings. Not quite that long. Nope. That was disallowed. And it's one on one. Two minutes and 18 seconds for that review. Worth it to me if you get it right. Definitely worth A.J. Hinch's time to come out and talk with the umpires about that call. Two balls, one strike. For Tony Sip. Chad Qualls has been getting loose. Fouled, and it's a full count. Be the longest foul ball we've seen this year, Ash. That was a genuine bomb right there. And I imagine the Rockies are pleased to see Gonzalez swinging the bat this well. No contact. He struck him out. He struck out the side thanks to the overturn. It went from home run to foul ball to strike out. And in the middle of the seventh inning, Astros lead holds up at eight to five.
presented by Southwest Airlines. Book your low fare now at southwest.com. And by Bud Light, stay in the game and drink responsibly. Here at Minute Maid Park, the tropical storm Bill outside. Inside, the Astros have built an 8-5 lead. 22,245 the paid attendance. There's the line score. We go to the bottom of the seventh inning. Tommy Canely came in and had a 1 2 3 sixth. Thanks to the great play at third by Arenado on Gaddis. Now, Chris Carter leads it off. He's 0 for 2 with an intentional walk. Foul back. There's strike one as Canely begins his second inning. He's pitcher number three for the Rockies. Canely was recalled June 1st from AAA Albuquerque. Bob Euchre when we need him. <laughs> Was that high? <laughs> one and one. You know, it's been a higher strike zone this year. We've seen it all year long with that strike box of ours. I think this may have caught the top end. <laughs> one and two. Balls, two strikes to Carter. Got somebody telling me that the northeast quadrant of the storm is the worst part of the storm. Okay. Are you uh, ready to buy into that? Well, I thought you were told that the west side is the dirty side. Well, we've been hearing that there would be more rain west of Interstate 45 than east of Interstate 45. So, yeah. Doesn't sound all that consistent, does it? We gotta get our story straight. We do. Carter draws the leadoff walk. It's a filthy little splitter that Canley has. Well, it's the dirty side of the storm that we're on, so yeah. That's why he trotted that out. You know, I don't even know where we sit in terms of the storm right now. <laughs> He's got a good fastball and then he breaks this thing out of the warehouse and it just dives. Second walk today, 37th of the year for Carter. He's fourth in the American League. Conger's the batter. He's two for three, a homer, two runs batted in for Hank. And it's strike one. In tight, it's one and one. Domingo Santana's on deck. In for a strike, and it's one and two. Boy, we've seen some games throughout the course of the year that have moved along very nicely, but this doesn't fit on that list. Is this game moving any faster than Tropical Storm Bill? I I, I think it may be just hanging over the city, kind of like this. Game feels like it's just hanging here. Ground ball wide of first base. Keeps the count at one ball, two strikes. Well, not only is there a lot of rain here, but elsewhere, the Corpus Christi hooks. 
will rain out on Sunday. Rockies had some rain outs in early May. They have some games to make up later on. Down on strikes. I assure you that pitch is no fun. Well, you can make a, a closer out of that kind of a, a splitter. Our make a big hit of the game. Let's go back to the third inning, I believe it is. Domingo Santana got his first major league hit. It drove in a run. That was crucial. And it led to a Luis Valbuena big home run, a three run shot. But it could just. Uh, Oil things up for Domingo Santana. Get him going. Strike one to him. He's one for two with that RBI single, and he was hit by a pitch, stole a base. He's had an active day of it. Santana puts that one in the seats. No balls, two strikes. Ronnie, you mentioned those games played. This is number 66 for the Astros. The Oakland A's started the day in the American League as the only team that had played 66. So the Astros are right up there in games played. No rainouts. Kansas City has played just 60 at the start of play today. Interesting. So they've got a lot of work to make up. Maybe that's why their fans have voted so many times for the All-Star team. They've had a lot of time off to, yeah. to work on it, haven't they? Scott Olberg is warming up for the Rockies. He now goes to two and two on Santana. I think to be a pitching coach anymore or a bullpen coach, you've got to have a clipboard. Two outs. That's the third punch out for Kane late. Yeah, clipboards look very efficient. Says I am working. Yeah, that's in the strike zone very easily. Okay. Check yourself on that one. Luis Valbuena homered in the second. Homered again in the third. That was a three-run shot. Walked in the fifth. Chad Qualls has been throwing for a while in the Astros bullpen. Really close ball one. Twins and Cardinals are underway again after a rain delay. Three to two St. Louis in the bottom of the seventh inning. Qualls getting ready to come in for Houston in the eighth. It's a one ball, one strike count. Michael Walker went six in the third, gave up two earned runs for St. Louis. You know, Yadier Molina just hit his first homer of the year yesterday. Now that is hard to believe. Yeah. The guy that's been probably the, the best of the Cardinals for years. One and two now to Valbuena. That was a mid 90s fastball. Yeah, that backed up by that splitter would make this guy among the really difficult guys. Now, this is going to be a fastball. Two and two. 
Well, only as a hitter you can get that peek into the glove as the hand reaches in. That's what some guys are really good at though is looking and figuring out what that hand is doing while reaching in. Tough assignment. Another heater. Full count now. And with two outs Chris Carter will be able to take off the first base. Paulson's going to play behind him. Athletics five Padres three they're in the top of the sixth in San Diego. Ben Zobrist hit his third homer. Carter goes and it's a ground ball to second. LeMayhew on to Paulson. No runs, no hits, and a man left after seven. The Astros lead it. And Orbit entertains eight to five. The Astros have a three run lead going to the eighth inning. Tony Sepp works it to a few hitters who just punch out on the changeup and the fastball blown by eventually to get Carlos Gonzalez, who had been provided a home run momentarily. A review took that away, but Tony Sepp sharp in his seventh inning, three strikeouts. Now it's Chad Qualls for the eighth. One and three record, four saves and six opportunities, a 5.06 ERA. Been getting a lot of ground balls. About a week ago, was in a little bit of a scuffle, leaving that sinker up, and it was getting hit hard. On Saturday, he worked a, score, a scoreless, hitless inning in the eight to one loss to Seattle, coming in just to get some work because of those outings you talked about, and things went much better. Nolan Arenado looks at strike one. Arenado's two for three. Tony Sipp struck out all three men he faced in a hitless seventh. Balls is pitcher number four for A.J. Hinch. And on the slider, didn't quite get it in there to get the call from Hunter Wendelstedt, so the count's one and one. Balls had given up runs in three outings in a row here against the White Sox in Baltimore and on the road at U.S. Cellular against the White Sox again. Fouled away and it's one and two. Chance had a really good strike rate 22 punch outs in 21 and a third innings. And he's third among all major league relievers in ground ball percentage 73%. Been his forte, that good sinker and slider combination through the years. Line to Altuve. And by the way, uh, Chad Qualls is tying Larry Durker with this appearance. 345 Astros appearances. 
playoff probabilities, the uh, projections with that Astros record of 37 28. They have a 43.6% chance to win the division. Is this from fan graphs? I believe it is. Yes, fan graphs. And the 57.9% chance to win the division are wild card. Okay, somebody's going to have to explain this to me then because that's not straight statistical for me. Because the Texas Rangers had a lesser chance than the Angels, for example, to win the division. Okay. And the Rangers have the better record. You see, chance to win division, 8.5% for Texas, 31.9 for the Angels. So I'm not sure where, where those numbers are coming from. They uh, project the statistics of the players ah. in a normal year. And if there are several players, for instance, the Astros have about four players who are below what their normal rate of performance would be. They would be projected to do better in the remainder of the season. I like it. Okay. Michael McHenry takes a look at ball one. Yeah, I was under the impression that set of stats uh, was derived from purely the point of wins and losses for a team and how that would percentage out for the rest of the year. Right. But I was wrong. You're never wrong. No. Well, we were wrong about the storm, though. One ball, one strike. Okay, so school me now. All right, we're going to be schooled uh, by Kerry McGrew on Twitter. Whether west or east of I-45, still we're on the dirty side of the storm, which went ashore down by Port O'Connor. Huh? <laughs> okay. One yeah, ball, two strikes. So which side of the, the... I need to know which side of the storm is the, the fierce one. We're on... The dirty side, which means we get more rain on this side of the storm. Okay, so if you took the center of the storm, is it east of us, west of us, or over the top? It's south. It's south. <laughs> really? That's the way you're going to play this? That's the way I'm playing it. Okay, so. Until I get home and watch more weather. <laughs> two balls and two strikes, and then I'll give you a real answer. I'll text you when you're on the plane. How would that be? I'm not going to qualify for my degree today. Nor is anybody else in this booth, pal. That's why we it's have south of us Doppler radar. I imagine the center still is south of us. It hasn't moved as predicted, but yeah, I thought the dirty and clean side were east and west. See, you have no response to that. Well, not necessarily. Sometimes yes, sometimes no. Oh, is that true? Yes. Yeah. Not in okay. every given circumstance. It may be north by northwest. <laughs> I can see that being the case. <laughs> we are way out of our given field. Tap foul. And of course, that leads to the question, which I won't bring up. No, I know. We, what is that we're given We're always field? way out of our given field, right? <laughs> That's what you're going to say. <laughs> and there would be a lot of agreement with that. Yeah. Giants lead the Mariners three to two in San Fran. They're in the top of the sixth inning right now with Tim Lincecum leading over Jay Happ. That's a two out walk to McHenry. And now Barnes will be coming up. How'd that inning and a third no hitter work out? Well, it, it didn't continue for very long. He's given up five hits and two runs and five and two thirds. Matt Duffy hit a sixth home run for the Giants. And Brad Miller hit number six for Seattle. Now the Mariners really are in need of making a move, many would think, even though it's not late in the season. Brandon Barnes won for three. Nonetheless, with the teams in front of them in the standings, they would like to be showing some headway soon. Conger checking that mask. You can't get away as a catcher with just a, a nice day. You got to have one or more of these. Mm. Watch out. Come on out. Ah, that reaction with the the jaw. Yeah. That's it's kind of classic. The one that used to hurt me the most. I, I could take any one and never really have any sense that 
anything had gone wrong, but the one that would hit off center down by the chin would throw my jaw to one side or the other, and then the little area up by your ear. See, I have all the technical terms ready to go here. Yeah. But it would throw that that uh, that the mandible tendon. No, not the mandible. It would not be the mandible. All right. But that was a nice effort. Yeah. It was the only word I could think of. Uh, the TMJ or I, I don't even know. Or is that a TV show? Yeah, okay. that's uh, that's a, a show <laughs> about television stars. Okay. One ball and two strikes. Anyway, it would provide you a good portion of a week where you just couldn't even chew at all. You know, Conger was on the uh, dirty side of that foul ball. Yes, he was. Joe Thatcher's warming up. Two balls, two strikes. Braves two, Red Sox two. Top of the sixth with Thatcher working there. Wade Miley working in Boston against Julio Tehran. That Boston club is in the doldrums. 27 and 38, nine games out, seven game losing streak for John Farrell. Now 3 2 to Barnes. I haven't followed the Red Sox closely. What what seems to be their main issue? The pitching is the main issue. But they've had problems in other areas as well. They really have made a lot of mistakes in the field recently. Runner going in, it's tap foul. Big Poppy has not hit at his usual clip. You know, it's a real challenge for a manager too when you've got an aging veteran starting to slow down and he doesn't feel that player that he should be taken out of the lineup at all. True. Barnes fouls it. Phillies are in Baltimore tonight. The White Sox play at Pittsburgh with Cincinnati and Detroit. Toronto's playing the Mets again. Yankees are in Miami, Washington, Tampa Bay, and so on in interleague play. Everybody's in interleague play right now. This will be the eighth pitch to Barnes. And it's ball four. Now back to back two out walks. Bring up LeMahieu representing the potential tying run. And Conger out. He may have seen something mechanically with Chad Qualls with the back to back walks. Now Brent Strom is on his way. This Astros bullpen with a 2.66 ERA, second best in the American League, has been a real strong point of the club. Several pitchers, of course, with the furious, terrific pace they set for the first six weeks or so. Have not been able to maintain that. But A.J. Hinch still has a collection of outstanding pitchers in his pen. Just a matter of sticking with them through some difficult times right now. Thing is, over the course of 162, if you can mount a, a 10 games over 500 uh, portion of the season, uh, 65, 66 games in, and that's where the Astros would be with a win today. You likely can play 500 the rest of the way and get yourself into the postseason. And uh, that fan graphs uh, projection we saw on the Astros chances to win the division or get a playoff spot. Pretty much stated that expecting the Astros to play about 500 ball. Strike to LeMayhew. He has an RBI double in three trips. They projected the division winning total to be somewhere around 86 wins. 85 wins to win the AL West according to Fangraphs. Bouncer up the middle, Correa to his left, and the toss to Altuve, just in time to get the force on Barnes. No runs, no hits, two men left, bottom of the eighth coming. The Astros lead it by three, eight to five.
TXU Energy Power Player today. I think you could guess it easily. That would be Luis Valbuena, who early on hit one to the first row of the Crawford boxes, then hit a very big three-run home run to the Astros bullpen in right center field. And that one really separated things. That was runs five, six, and seven for the Astros. And gave them a lead that has not been overtaken by the Rockies. And these long balls are such a lift to a club. Now here in the bottom of the eighth inning as Luis Valbuena sits on the bench. The Astros lead at eight to five. They come up with Marisnik, Springer, and Correa due to bat against reliever Scott Oberg. He is pitcher number four for the Rockies. He's allowed seven homers in 22 and a third innings while going two and one with a 4.84. Oberg is from Massachusetts, from Tewksbury. He's 25 years old. 15th round draft choice of the Rockies in 2012. Marisnik is one for three. Short hop play Arenado again. One out. That all I have to say is oh come on. And yet, throwing on the run he's right on the money. And I'm assuming based on what we've seen that he throws on the run a good deal of the time. The guys get a little errant with that. We haven't seen any of that in Arenado's hands in terms of gloving the baseball. Solid as can be. That's one out now George Springer he's one for four. Check swing foul ball pass Rich Dower at first. Drank one we're getting some help on Twitter Ash about this storm. Yeah I need help. All right the east side is the wet side. According to Chris Cole. And, and that translates to dirty side. Yeah. OK. The storm is currently southwest of Minute Maid Park. Getting another one that says the northeast quadrant of the storm is the dirtiest part. Hmm. Well, that fits in with the east side and maybe that lead side since hurricanes, as we know them, this part of the world moved northward. Right. The front right quadrant contains the strongest winds and peak storm surge. Thank you, Joe Montalbano. So we're getting a lot of help yeah. in uh, breaking this storm down for you. So to speak, we'd like to break it down. Springer's down on strikes. Rookie year, Troy Tulowitzki. What did he do? And, and this is an endeavor to see a, a, about a guy, Tulowitzki, who's went on to uh, be rookie of the year. He's been just one of the, the really great players in the game when he can stay healthy. But he hit 291 that year, 24 dingers. How might that compare to Carlos Correa? Time will tell that story, but keep in mind that's uh, Coors aided. Nonetheless, a very fine player, and I have no doubt, doubt in my mind Carlos Correa is going to be a very fine player. That's strike one to him. He's one for four. He checks the swing there. One ball, one strike. Tommy Canley in two innings allowed no hits, no runs. He had one walk and struck out three. Bouncer third. And that's a foul ball. That was the one play he didn't make, and the ball was foul. That almost got interesting because third base umpire Jerry Lane, as I saw it, started to throw his left hand toward a fair ball. But it is the home plate umpire's call, and so he deferred at that point. But it's really close. Does any part of that baseball, if it were on the ground, touch any part of the bag? And if it does, it's a fair ball. Since storm systems rotate counterclockwise, the dirty side is the one to the east of the central low pressure area.
We haven't heard from Dr. Neil Frank, have we? Klein shot into left center field. Correa gets his second hit of the game. He hit that one on the dry side of the barrel. <laughs> and he took a tough breaking ball. There it is. Rotating down. You can see where the catcher was trying to catch it. Well, everybody, the very best in the game, will have their tough times. But I think tough times are going to be limited with this guy. He has 11 hits in his first eight major league games. And 34 at bats. Jose Altuve is one for three in RBI single. Josh Fields is warming up for the Astros. Luke Gregerson had been throwing earlier. It would be a save situation if the Astros went to the ninth with the eight to five lead. And the throw goes over, driving Correa back. I would say the focus right now on the mound is misplaced. Another throw drives it back again. Well, we've seen the step off, hold the ball move, and two pickoffs. And if I were catching, I'd say, let's go, get your hitter. Two, babe. Jim Bowden weighs in on ESPN on the All Star voting. And he says it's downright embarrassing that Josh Donaldson is more than 1.6 million votes behind Michael Stockus. 2 0. Oh. And also. That Todd Frazier and Nolan Arenado both trail Matt Carpenter and Chris Bryant at third base in the National League. And he talks about the American League second base situation. In tight to Altuve, and Jose has worked the count to 3 0. I would assume he feels that Matt Kipnis is the deserving soul. Here's what he says. Well, how about the embarrassment of Omar Infante, the worst hitter in Major League Baseball? Aye, aye, aye. He ranks dead last in OPS, WOBA, and there's a strike to Altuve, three and one, and WRC plus among batters with 190 plus plate appearances, being first in the AL voting at second base with 4.5 million votes, even more than the great Jose Altuve. Broken bat roller, Tunowitzki charging, throwing on the run to get Altuve. And in the eighth, it's no runs a hit and a man left. We move to the ninth, eight to five, Astros.
Rookie Rewind. Here we saw George Springer early in the game make this reaction diving play to rob one. And then, of course, this was actually last night's ball game. And each one of those catches, George was just red hot making the plays. We've seen the defense of Carlos Correa going both ways, making great plays. So you got Springer and Correa laying out to make the play. Defense been a big part of what these Astros have done. You don't have the solid pitching without that kind of defense. The closer comes in, Luke Gregerson, with a three-run lead, one inning to go. It is a safe situation. He's two and one. He's 16 for 18 in saves with a 4.15 ERA. He got the save last night in the six to three win. And now it's Charlie Blackman leading it off. Blackman is one for three, an RBI single in the second. He also has drawn a walk. There's strike one for Luke Gregerson. Chad Qualls in one inning, allowed no hits, no runs, had two walks, no strikeouts. Well, the relief has been very good for A.J. Hinch's club. Foul back 0 and 2. Will Harris, Tony Sipp, and Chad Qualls have combined for three and a third innings of two hit shutout baseball. Starter Vincent Velasquez in four and two thirds innings allowed seven hits, five runs. If the Astros win this game and by maintaining the lead, they win it, the official scorer decides who the winning pitcher is. In for strike three call, one out. That's 13 punch outs for Astros pitching. Corey Dickerson had the RBI, had the double in the first inning. It was not an RBI double. He's one for four. Well, the Astros trying to get a sweep of this brief two game series before giving the Rockies home field advantage for the two game set starting tomorrow night at Coors Field. And they would be four and one on this five game homestand with a win today. Strike to Dickerson. Well, we thank all of our weather experts for helping us through something that uh, really was not comfortable for us, Ash. <laughs> Talking weather, yeah. Talking weather. Yeah. A little out of the realm, huh? Yeah. A little tap to first base. Carter's there. And it's out number two. What's this? Two quick outs here in the half inning, huh? Yeah. Gregerson last night gave up one hit, no runs in his one inning. Now he'll be facing Tulowitzki, is one for four. The official score has said that Will Harris will be the winning pitcher. The way the game stands right now. Came in in the fifth inning after the two run homer by Gonzalez had made it 7 5 Houston. Gave up a double to Arenado and a single in the next frame, but did not allow any runs. Tulowitzki leaned back from ball one. Fans are standing. Castro's trying to be 23 and 14 at home. Up the middle. Altuve short hop play to end it. And the Astros polish off the four and one homestand. They go to 10 games above 500. 38 and 28 by sweeping this brief two game series. Gregerson with the save. Harris gets the win. Final score is the Astros eight and the Rockies five.